Tell us what you have a problem. We that's you need. <laughs> Call in now at one eight hundred whatever. That'd yeah. be, be that'd be more like uh, asked and answered. You know, you called and then uh, and, and we give you like uh, mm, this, we look at each other and like. So you're having a problem with your boyfriend. Right, right, right. We're 605. We're 605. <laughs> it's the, the point. You know, I, um, I was asked about doing like a live show. And I, mm. I couldn't get into it, man. I couldn't get into doing a live show. It was it, because I think like, like sitting here having a conversation with you and then trying to sit down and like watch all the shit that's going on here on the computer and trying to respond to like some of these fucking people. Like I want to interact with them, but at the same time, like I care much more about having a conversation with you. Is that what a live show would entail? Is like uh, fielding online questions and phone calls? And, yeah, or, like like every time, like I don't know if you've seen it. Like like Jim Larson does a. It's called uh, the JD Happy Hour. I have not. So they do it on Facebook, and um, like half the time, like they're not even they're not even taught. Well, first off, they do the whole thing by Zoom. It's a great show, but. The, the two people, like, they're not even interacting on the camera. They're, they're kind of looking down and talking. That's a great format to do, like, for, for that method. But, like, me personally, I'd lose my fucking mind. Like, I'd get pissed off. Like, someone would say something, and I'd fucking, and I'd, and I'd, I'd lose my shit, dude. I'd start, <laughs> I'd go off, you Talk know. You're talking about the questions you're fielding? Like yeah, that. like, if someone says something, I'd, I'd literally lose my fucking mind. I wouldn't be able to handle it, so... But uh, man, Joey, appreciate it. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for actually agreeing to come on here, man. <laughs> With reluctance, is this live? Is this yeah, it's recording, man. Welcome. <laughs> I want to welcome you guys. <laughs> if you've made it this far, stick around. <laughs> Do I have a story to tell you guys? <laughs> no. no, that's cool, man. It's always great seeing you. I, I love uh, actually, I love your show. Yeah, I mean, I mean do you I, actually do you actually watch have, any of it? Uh, I'd be lying if I said f full transparency if I saw every minute of every show. Of course, you not. fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> but I familiarize myself with uh, your format. I'm I, I'm overly familiar with the personality I'm dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and like I was telling you off camera, man. Uh, uh, why not you? You know, I feel like uh, I feel like you have um, definitely all the equipment. Yeah, but, but the personality to be carve your own way and do your own podcast. I think it's cool. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, it's funny. I was actually, I was, uh, I, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, you know, I actually was talking to, um, on Saturday, I talked to a guy named, his name's Chris Kessler. He's a coach up in, I told you, in Indiana, right. creating the um, North, North, Northwest Point Series lead, kind of something that's almost, is, do you remember the Naira track? I do. Okay, so like the more. I, so when that all went down, I wasn't overly involved in Naira, but, uh, but I'm, I, I'm familiar Did you skate with, it? I the Naira track, like yeah. the Oval, uh, yeah. but, but I, I, don't, I can't say I've ever skated at a Naira sanctioned event. Yeah, because I, I mean, as far as I remember, like if we skated that, like like we would get fucking booted from USAC. There was a there was definitely a dilemma, something to think about. If you wanted to entertain doing that, you were giving up rights as a USAC card holder. Right? It's, been, so it's like a lifetime ago. I don't really remember. Yeah. But. Well, shit. I mean, you well, you you kept skating for for several years after I quit. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. What when did you get out? Uh, well, I went to ice in 2000, 2001. Still skating. <laughs> <laughs> Still yeah. on the wheels. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I was wishing everyone well. I mean, of course, uh, everyone, everyone was inspired by that. What was it? Uh, but, Apollo's run got you going or what? No, what honestly, I didn't fucking like Apollo. Um, I, I, I honestly elaborate. I, yeah. I honestly, I, <laughs> dude, I own, I, 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 I always, um, I mean, I respected Apollo. I, I respected what he did as far as like, you know, becoming this. I'm gonna tell you what. Like, did you know him personally? Absolutely. Um, so he, he, he was he was a, a, a pretty single track minded guy. So I, I, I don't mean to cut you off. But when we were at these meets, a lot of the light, the same aged kids would link up and play grab ass, play video games, whatever. And at a really young age, almost certainly because of his parents' influence, he was there to race. Yeah. And so that there was a disconnect between him and his peers. Yeah. So I understand totally that there was a there's a rub with that guy because he's so overly focused on the outcome of the event where we were at an age where I think we were just that was part of it. Yeah. And the other part was Well, like I tell everybody, I mean, like I, I openly acknowledge the fact that I was an asshole, but I was an asshole uh, I was an <laughs> asshole for a different reason. Like I was just an asshole for being a fucking asshole. Like he was an asshole because his like his rigid successful. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like his like it was rigid, like his mindset was on skating. Yeah, so sure. like he didn't give a fuck about anybody else. I was just an asshole because I was a fucking rich spoiled kid. Yeah. You know, and so um 
But I remember like like nationals one year, like he was supposed to be the winner. Like he was supposed to be the one that was going to win. And then... Was he wearing an ultimate? He might have been. Yeah, he was sponsored. Like one of the first sponsored guys our age. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was a really weird thing. Um, pick, if you Should want, I do lean, it? Should I lean hold back. it? There you go. Lean, lean back and hold the fucking mic. I feel like Rakim. Check, check, check. Check. <laughs> <laughs> Check out my melody. Yeah, there you go, man. Lean back, hold the microphone. All right, yeah. This is very natural and very comfortable for me. Yeah. I'm yeah. in my element. Yeah, yeah. The, exact, <laughs> the exact opposite of all of that. <laughs> Proceed. But, but yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we're at Nationals, man, and, like, we're, you know, we're all sitting down there in, like, the, 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 the skater ready area and stuff like that, and he's over basically having a fucking panic attack. Um, because, that, that or visualizing the race. Yeah. So he's I mean, in, in my mind, in my mind, he's fucking having a panic attack and hit maybe over, maybe over like everybody who knows him because like he's, he's great in that way. Like he's over there getting ready for it. <laughs> in my mind, he's fucking scared out of his goddamn mind to skate against me. Uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I told myself and I'm sticking that's right. to it. That's a story I created anyway. And, um, but he loses, you know, like, like he, like he was slated to win this year. Like he was supposed to win. And, and, I, and I'm quite honestly, I fucking destroyed him. And I won nationals that year. And like he was like, freshman or sophomore. It was either, I think it was sophomore, either freshman or sophomore. It was, it was either second year freshman or first year sophomore. Dude, you had a year. This is probably the year you're talking about where you skated for square dots. Yes. And did you win every race? Yes. Motherfucker. dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You were the man that year for yeah. sure. Yeah. And well, that was, that's the year that I think he, he, he quit. He ended up be. quitting in line yeah, and he yeah, went to yeah. ice. Yeah. And so of course, you know, we, 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 we knew each other. We, we had friends, we had associations and things like that. But what ended up happening was, um, I had two more interactions really with him past that was one year made the world team. We were at the Olympic training center and he's watching what, well, yeah, he, he comes there. He's kind of like seeing what we're doing, all this other stuff on but, his bike or something. But we happen to be in the cafeteria. And he, he was like, hey, he's like, hey, man, he's like, he invites me to come like hang out in his dorm room. He's like one of the, you know, he's, he's like runs the place. Yeah. He's in charge. So he gets me past security and we go upstairs and hang out. And I mean, it was, you know, it's, I mean, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like, it was like this room for, for himself where he was living. And it was weird. Remember I was telling you earlier about like, uh, like it's a very American thing. You go to someone's house and they're like, Hey, let me show him around. House. Right. Yeah. Like, like I, like I grew up with in a big house. And so like, like his coolness kind of wasn't like, it just didn't affect me in that way. Cause it was a dorm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, but don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, he's, he's 17 years old, 16, yeah, 17 yeah, years old. Yeah, yeah. Living away own. from home. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, in that, that, that in respect, it was fucking cool. But you know, he's like, he's like, oh, and there's this and I got this at this world cup and I'm this and that. And I'm like. Stop being an asshole. <laughs> like just, just like just be fucking normal, dude. And he was nice enough. And then, um, and then a couple years later, when we were in Canada, um, I had just switched over to ice. Man, I'm sitting there watching. I, I have, I'm doing long track, so I have no fucking clue what happens in the short track. I only like I hear names. I see people that come through. I'm living in Canada, so I'm like, I, I really have no fucking concept of what they're doing out there. And we're sitting up in the stands together. He comes up there and we're hanging out, we're talking and, you know, just kind of catching up a little bit. And, and, I, and I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. And I just, this was my mentality of who the fuck he was or how he behaved was I was talking about one of these athletes out there and I just, I'd only heard their name. I knew nothing about them. And I'm like, oh, well, does this person do this? And he looks at me dead in the eye and he says, you know, Jason, you may have been really good at inline skating and that was your sport. He says, but you don't know shit about ice. He said, this mm. is my sport. And he says, that person out there fucking sucks. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, Touché. It, yeah, I was like, okay, well, Hey, you, where does the conversation go it's, from it's, here? It's yours, boss. It's your world. But <laughs> Do you want to fight. But at the same time, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, like I, like you're, I, I like, I'm acknowledging, like, I don't know a fucking thing about the sport and like, like, and, and maybe that was, I don't know. I mean, no, this falls parallel to some stories I've heard. I, I was overly, uh, uh, familiar with and, and friends with, uh, Ryan Cox mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. Charles Levier, the dude, you know, yeah. he, um, was, uh, I mean, I would say being bullied almost by Apollo because he'd come from inlines and maybe wasn't part of the, the in crowd. Uh, I've, I've heard stories. Harry was out at one of these places and, and he was being taunted yeah. by Apollo. So Apollo wasn't overly welcoming to, 
the inline uh, uh, transfers, right? And um, that was his terrain. I, I, Which is fucking odd, though. I, I guess mean, he's a little territorial about, like, especially Colorado Springs. I'd imagine if you were if you were in Colorado Springs visiting for whatever reason, like. Yeah, but, but but I'm like, bitch, I live in Canada. Like, this is where I live. Yeah. Like, you're visiting here. Like, yeah. like this is this is the home rink that I skate on. Like, man, I'm like, look, man, like, we've known each other for, like, him and I at this point. We've known each other for, like, 10 years. But I'm not trying to tread on your shit. I'm just known each other like a, like a, a competitive uh, relationship at nationals. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, like, not like our relationship, like friends, like we talk to each other and shit on a regular basis. Well, something interesting that happened when we were younger, our age, you know, was like uh, instant messenger. So now you're not just, <laughs> well, you're not, you're not just seeing you're you're the Unabomber. Yeah, yeah, the Unabomber. <laughs> no, but you're not just seeing each other at meets. You're, we're in contact throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. And then you pick up right where you left off. That's yeah. kind of what we have now. I haven't seen you probably really, literally in over a decade. Maybe yeah, a, it's, it's been at least 10 years. Not, didn't, even, didn't even miss a step. No. We're, we're laughing by the pool like we're 15. You know. no, when we walked in, when you walked in and gave you a hug of like, do I get in close enough to where like our junk touches? Like, do we get that <laughs> yeah. close? Are we like, docking? Yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> so, uh, no, but I mean like, so, cause my rapport with, uh, with him is probably not as close as you, but it's the same thing. Like, like a head nod at nationals. Yeah. Like I'm going to see you in a little bit. Well, You're I mean, probably going to smoke me. He, he was, cause he was for real in a time where people weren't taking it for real. I, I think you were, you were very, uh, uh, high level at that time. But like, if you're a freshman boy or sophomore boy, or I mean, the idea of what you're trying to accomplish isn't really sunk in. Yeah. You're just kind of, but it it did for him. Yeah. Um, well, I I, well, I mean, it definitely for him. I think it made like like, it definitely made sense. He knew what he was going to do with sure. his career and life and all that stuff. And my familiarity actually with Apollo more so than my personal experience is through Miguel. Yeah. And, and and so Miguel, being from the Northwest, has a real tight relationship with uh, Apollo, or at least he did. And there's stories of Apollo when he first went, I think his dad had high, very high standards for him and he ended up running away from home. He ran away to Miguel's house. And so like Miguel has the whole backstory on that dude. And, yeah. uh, and ultimately he's turned into an awesome ambassador for the sport. Absolutely. And, uh, but his growing pains are the same as all of ours, I guess. But, uh, but his, know, unfortunately for him, I think the difference was that he was growing up in front of the camera. Like, 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 like we, we, I think to a degree that our maturity is I love stunted, it. like, like ours is a little bit like more <laughs> retarded because of, I mean, that's kind of, sure. It keeps me up at night, but there's not video of it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Shit, like, yeah, his, his yeah. is completely documented oh, every man. fucking aspect of his life, every training session, every fuck up. So all things considered, he did really well. He did. He, and he managed it really well. I mean, like some close to like $50 million or something like that. I give myself and guys like even, especially someone like that, a pass because I mean, we're, young adults trying to behave in a way that we thought was appropriate at the time. I'm sure like this guy had to go back in time. He would be a, more gentlemanly, yeah. but we were all, I mean, I went to a high school reunion, right? Like a, it was a 10 year reunion and a guy's like, Oh man, you used to like ride me in high school. I'm like, that's actually not, probably not me. I, I, I really, yeah. I really took offense to it because that's like, cause that was my experience in high school. I'm like, yeah. no. And he's like, yeah, man, you called me a fucking meatball. And I was like, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> that was me. But you don't really. But th this is someone to me uh, uh, that I would say is forgettable. But you know, these words have an impacting thing, and 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 it's like. Uh, so anyway, I give myself and other people a pass. If you did some dumb shit in your teens, okay, well, look, I mean, okay. Yeah, in the environment we were in, of you course. you didn't have it all figured out by then. Yeah. I, so the guy's probably a stand-up guy now, and yeah, you know, of probably a fantastic human being. Yeah, yeah. stellar. Yeah. <laughs> So, listen, you wouldn't dance with, how can you win Dancing with the Stars if you're not top tier character? Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, side note, sidebar, totally unrelated. I'm watching uh, uh, Long Track. Mantia had just raced today. Okay. The 1500 meter, and Joey Cheek is the announcer. Yeah. It's I great, mean, right? Not just in the sport of speed skating, the guy sounds pro level. He's great. Great. He's great. I don't know how much he 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 practices that. I mean, the guy doesn't say um, uh, uh. He is just. I mean, the, he sounds like Bob Costa. He sounds fantastic. It's his full time job now. I mean, that's, it can't be. How often is he announcing uh, uh, skating races? He does, Every four years. He does all the World Cup events. Well, that's not surprising. He sounded, uh, uh, dude. Shout out to Joey Cheek. He sounded, he sounded awesome. Yeah, yeah. Fan really does fan, sound fantastic. The guy sounds like a it's, pro. It's actually, it's very. I was actually, well, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Well, I was talking to Jonathan Garcia about this, and it's, and it's a very. You stay in contact with Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. We talk, uh, and it's funny just because he's from Houston. Yeah, yeah. And I love Jonathan. Shout out to Jonathan Garcia. Well, it's 
like especially like around the time of like like the Trump election and everything, like him and I had a lot of conversation because he was for or against or well he he he's re, he's the resistance and you're the n- not you're no, the flag bearer. <laughs> Dude, this guy's off the fucking reservation, no, dude. No. You, want to talk, you want to talk? Put your tinfoil hats on if you're at no. home. Yeah, we will have a tinfoil moment because I think actually, <laughs> I I don't know if I went. Yeah, I think I'm, we we were talking about it earlier. I think yeah. I did find it. Get Jonathan, go back, it. Jonathan. You but and Jonathan, Jonathan again. Uh, so, Jonathan and I would talk quite a bit because uh, we reconnected back in 2019. Went out there, saw him when I was married. We, like I went out there for some training. And we hung out for for a couple days, and like super proud of like the man he's become. He's become like a really good kid, man. And I say kid, he's like four years younger than us. I say, I'm, I feel old. I say that. Yeah. But he's a great kid. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. uh, And he's doing a great career, but we like, we'll have these conversations about politics and his, his conversation was more along the lines of, he was asking questions rather than, rather than, Hey, this is why Trump, he wasn't anti-Trump and he wasn't pro-Biden. He wasn't liberal. He wasn't conservative. It was just, hey, why is this? And because his father, um, being from Houston, his brother, being from Houston, uber, uber conservative. So if he ever went to them, it was Trump, 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 Trump. And me being one of the kind of people that I am, and I think you're very similar to this, you're just a real fucking realistic person. Like, you, you got a you got a person that we support because we think he did a better job. Not necessarily he's the best fucking person in the world. Trump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, no, I mean, uh, like I'm not gonna sit here and condone. Like I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I, I I if if everything that I did like Apollo was on fucking camera and everything else, like I would be condemned. I mean, uh, Trump saying at some point talking about grabbing women by the pussy. <laughs> He's a private citizen, you know. I mean, yeah. half the shit he did when it was the documentation of his life was when he was a private citizen. A, a funny thing about that, right? So when that came out, the the cover up quickly was like um, locker room talk, right? And yeah. it's like I've been in a couple of locker rooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in, I've been in some pretty vulgar locker rooms, yeah. right? I never heard anybody talk like that. Also, I'm not a billionaire. I'd imagine billionaires talk different in a different rooms. manner. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't justify it or whatever, but like. No, 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 locker room talk. Got, boys will be boys. True. Yeah. But I know a lot of boys. I know a little, a lot of like outrageous boys. Yeah. And they, they're not as, they're not quite as like on the nose as that statement. Right. <laughs> like, like I just grab them by the, okay. Like I, like I'm not going to write it off. I'm like, like, okay, that's probably not like the best thing that, that somebody in his, even in his framework of life should be saying. I appreciate that it wasn't a disqualifier because it wasn't part of his platform. It wasn't part of his current life. Yeah. Now I got to say. You voted for Trump. Yeah. I got to say, that's a leap of faith in as much as um, his record, to my knowledge, was very pro-Democrat. Yes. He was a donor for Democrats. His positions from everything from pro-choice to what has always been very pro-Democrat. So everyone was sort of taking him at face value, or maybe they're voting for the lesser of the two evils is the common th- theme, right? Like, like he can't be worse than the alternative. This is yeah. the sort So... Um, the fact that he governed that way, I think, has to be a surprise to the people who voted for him. They were hoping that he would vote the way he was advertising. He had no reason to stick by that. People who didn't vote for him had a reason to believe that he wouldn't. I mean, how can you change your feathers so late in life? And he did. Yeah. He did govern the way he advertised. Hundred uh, percent. He didn't. He didn't back down from he that didn't. shit at he, all. He, in, in fact, he was like, even on like the most pro-choice guy in the world, became like the most overly. Uh, pro-life guy so i mean the guy changed which is an extremely odd thing for me very weird to really not just lip service but to like govern that way yeah and and your whole life was a whole different thing so i mean the guy was a conundrum he's the guy was just a whole thing yeah but you know what what, what (laughs) threw me through a loop what i what i just i couldn't fathom what i couldn't wrap my head around was back if you go back to the 90s and early 2000s even into the late 80s Trump was like the idea of what, of what success was. Like everybody talked about, Oh, well, I'm going to be Trump. Sure. Like, I, like, like that was what it meant to be successful. Sure. It's in all this music. I can understand even like we talked about almost giving a pass to somebody for certain things, because let's make it clear. And a politician's job is to get elected. Like, like Trump's a billionaire. He's going to be a billionaire before he goes into the office. He's going to be a billionaire when he leaves. But his job, he's taken on a new position, which sure. is to get elected. So he's going to say whatever the fuck is necessary for his base, yes, and then it, yeah. to get elected. Absolutely. But you have you have artists, 
who built careers, musicians, rappers, who built careers based on saying, hey, I want to do this. I want to be a baller. I want to be rich. I want to be just like Donald Trump. And then have a complete fucking 180 on... When it's not in vogue, when you're not... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's complete opposite direction. Like it's not cool now to say you want to be like Trump. Well, some of that he has to own. Something he didn't do a good job of, if, if we're being objective. Because you could sing his praises. He, he governed in a way that... I would agree with, but very he, aggressive, but here's other things too. Like I've heard other people say like, um, in response, let's say like about the black, B, the BLM, BLM, uh, uh, movements, yeah. riots, uh, the protests, riot. protests, <laughs> fucking riots, peaceful protests. Yeah. Mostly peaceful protests. Okay. They were fucking riots. Okay. A lot of the sentiments that he expressed as president were very much in line with like your uncles or your neighbors or yourself. Yeah. Okay. Which is, in my opinion, not the job of the president. You understand? So a lot of people saw that quality in him and was like, yeah, man, hell yeah, that's exactly what I think. He's like, yeah, but he's not your friend. He's not your neighbor. His job as, a, uh, a, a, as, as that figurehead is to, even if, if that's the way he feels, is to extend an olive branch, not compromise, but say, you're heard. I'm listening to you. I'm trying to come to some common ground and understand where you guys are coming from, understand why dissect it what's your beef okay here's why i think that's nonsense bah, 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 bah. but like he never had that dialogue and he sort of agreed with the uncles at thanksgiving that people you know what i mean and, it, and it's sort of like so it is divisive right and and so i guess my idea of, of of being presidential is that is coming to a to not a compromised position but a, a position that all people can find that now people are going to be willfully ignorant, no matter what position you take, they're just dead, dead steadfast against you. But I feel like he didn't, uh, use the opportunity. And I, but I don't know fucking, I don't know anything about the politics. <laughs> and here's what I think you should do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like as the, I think, I think what does it mean to be presidential anymore? What does that mean? Does it mean be yourself no matter fucking what, shove it down their throats? Like this is the, authentic, this is the authentic me. Or does it mean, Oh, I'm a symbol for something larger and I have to represent a bigger outlook. He, do you think, do you think Trump maybe degraded what it meant to be a president a little bit? I mean, it's hard to say that he didn't. Do you think that he took away the cachet of it? Like the, the, well, I'll, I'll quote, I'll, I'll, I'll kick the can. What Ben, ben Shapiro's uh, reluctance in voting for him was that he would decay the moral fabric. So he did not vote for him the first time around after seeing him live in office he realized he's governing as a as a conservative and this is what he aligns with so he's all on board sure and whatever decay happened to the moral fabric happened anyway it it, it, it occurred regardless of Trump. so so you might as well be on the train now that was his thing so i mean did he or didn't he i don't know but i i, I don't know i think there should be like again what does it mean to be presidential there should be a governor on your i mean bro if if, if obama in contrast had the governor off. I mean, this guy was wearing a lot of hats in office. In my opinion, he had to navigate not being the angry black guy, not being the overly, <laughs> this guy had a lot of, no, really, man. When you think like he's the first black president <laughs> yeah. and, and, and he, and he con conducted himself accordingly, the guy has to get credit for that. I mean, he really, uh, like, it's like what you just said was like the, the title of a Spike Lee movie. <laughs> how about the guy? How about the guy that yelled at him? Liar. Remember this? Yeah. Bro, that's unprecedented. I mean, that's not that's not been seen. That level of disrespect has not been seen. Now, you, it, the argument of whether it was warranted, whatever, whole different discussion. It's like, how, what, what would Trump's response to that have been? And 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 and, 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 and before you answer, before you answer, whatever your answer is, it could Obama could not react the same way. So he no. has he is shackled by this like constant. So uh, no, I, I tell everybody. I mean, people ask me. A lot, just because I talk about this shit a lot. Dude, but. pivot hard. This is not my. Dude, dude, this is <laughs> this is not my area. This is not my area of fucking. I can only dance in the middle yeah, so long. Hey, I don't dude, know what do you want from me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> Doing just fine. I don't know. But no, like you know, people ask me all the time, and I'm like, you know what? I think I think one of the most presidential presidents that we've ever had was Obama. I mean, look, I wasn't anti-Obama. I'm a very strong supporter of our commander in chief. I love whichever president's in office. I, I, I strongly want that president to do well. Even now. 
Biden. But Jesus Christ. Even then, no, <laughs> goddamn. That motherfucker is just taking the goddamn ship to the fucking ground. He has lit a fucking match in just watching this bitch burn. It's pretty hard to defend, even if you're the most yeah. steadfast. The only thing they're resting their head on, and it's a good, it's a good uh, position of, uh, to, to rebuke is, I'm using the wrong word. I don't know. This insurrection bullshit. Yeah. So what's the so in their minds, what's the alternative? Oh my god, that that apparently apparently January sixth is as bad as the fucking Holocaust or or uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Admittedly, it's not. Jesus Christ. With that said, it's not nothing. No. It's pretty bad. Sure. Not to be conflated with real, real, real tragedies. It's not a terrorist attack. Uh, hands down. But but it but. So this is a major hang-up, too. Again, I, I won off this subject so fucking bad. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to come out and be one of these fucking South Florida liberals? No, 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 no. But, but objectively, obje <laughs> ob ob objectively, you can't ignore the fact that, like, the guy planted seeds of doubt before any ballot was cast. So, in other words, either I win or this is a rigged election, and the election hasn't even taken place yet. This borders on un-American. Fake news. Oh. Fake news. No, he, it's out of his mouth, man. It's out of his mouth. So, so I feel like I feel like he. I don't know, man. I that, that and 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 the non peaceful. Do you think maybe he power. saw it coming? Do you think maybe he? I mean, look, look, look. We've done. I've done government work, and so as 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 idiotic as we want to believe the government is, the government knows every fucking thing. The government's listening to you. The government's watching you. Every time you put in something in your goddamn search, don't say browser history. Yeah, browser oh, history. yeah they got God. it all. They got no. it. No. Yes. Yeah, they, they, believe me. You know what? They, they're not as judgmental as your wife, but they know what it's there, okay? So they see it all. And so they have people that they're paying hundreds of millions of dollars to that are tracking down this stuff. Mm. So I don't think for one second that they did not believe that there was not some type of research or study that showed that there was a very high likelihood of voter fraud for certain things to when, when certain, certain things to occur. It has to hit the fan at some point, right? And, and, and when cornered whether it be Giuliani, Trump himself, any whistleblower, anybody, when cornered, they come up pretty empty, dude. Yeah, but okay, but... but, but and know. by the way, by the way, this is hilarious to me too, right? Get me off this subject. <laughs> Look, this guy, they always show this guy. Takes the ballot and throws it away. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, proof. What did what that guy do it three times? That's, that, this is the systemic fraud that impacted an election is the one disgruntled employee who's like throwing away the ballots. And by the way... They never tried to throw away the whole ballot because they largely agreed with flipping this seat, flicking that seat. But it's the presidential race on the same ballot. That's the part. That's yeah. bullshit. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, think, I think realistically, anyone that doesn't think Biden won the election fair and square, they're the ones – they truly have their work cut out for them as far as producing. Yeah. No, we're good. Thank you. No, thank you. What's she It's just housekeeping. Ah. Hey, man, that's part of the day. Hey, when you're on the sixth floor at the fucking Hilton, dude, <laughs> let me tell you the kind of service this guy gets. You don't oh want to know. I got some stories. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, you know what? I tell you what, <laughs> hey, man, that's that, that's that free upgrade I was talking about. Be nice, people. That's right. Don't be assholes of service, people. Anyway, look, the guy did some good. He did some bad. I'm, I'm of the, I, I, I wish I had the comfort and the confidence to belong to a team. Like there's there's people who find an identity on being on that this team and that team and I, I and not just with politics with a, ver, a a lot of things I find myself in the middle when the guy does good I say good job when the guy does bad I think fuck him you know sure. and, and this is how I feel about most elected officials is is like it, be cautious not to be a fan of anybody man I mean like they, they're they're public employees they should be under a lot of scrutiny well should we, I mean we should judge the person based on kind of like I mean look hey. Happy uh, Black History Month, by the way. Thank you. Very uh, much. But but I appreciate that. To uh, you know Martin Luther King, he says, uh, judge the judge the person by the content of their character, not by the color of their skin. Right. Okay. Well, take somebody who's a politician. These motherfuckers are trying to sell us a product. Their job is to get elected. You know, I had this conversation with my father, and it was to say, okay, well, look, the reason Obama got elected is not because. Everybody fucking loved everything he had to say. It's not the same reason for Trump. It's not the, they didn't love everything he had to say. But he ran on a platform of ten different things, and more a majority of those resonated. And he was running against Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, true. Fucking McCain. You know if McCain would have won, and if McCain would have been reelected, but you realize he wouldn't have lived through his. Correct. Yeah. So the so which is a, circles back to a bigger issue. Why are these two? 
people in cognitive decline are best options. This is such a silly thing. Well, anyway. that, that's 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 the whole system that we fucking live in. But this was the downfall of society was um, McCain, who I originally really liked. Sure. Coming up. Yeah. Until his presidential bid. I was really a pro McCain guy. Um, but the, the, the hard part about running for president though, man, is you got, they're, they're going to expose everything warts and all like you're, you're no longer, it's no longer the perfect sound bites. It's literally every fucking part of your life. Whoever got a hold of him, in my opinion, uh, there's, there's one, like uh, one specific clip that's, you could find easily on YouTube where they ask him about gay marriage. Now it's just a given, Yeah. but this was like a hot button thing. Like, man, what, what can gay people get married? What, where do you stand on that? This was a big thing. And his knee-jerk reaction without hesitation was I'm very much for it. Love is love. You want to get married? It's my bad. And he was at the university of whatever. Uh, thank you very much, Senator McCain. We're going to go to commercial break. And his aides get in his ear. And then they come back from commercial break. And now, we, Senator, we want to ask you about it. And he goes, oh, I just want to clarify. I want to go back if we could. Yeah. Uh, uh, while I do believe this and that is a personal opinion, I believe um, very much – that marriage is between a man and woman. Now this guy was just in his ear and he got booed. Yeah. And the reason he got booed, get it, get it. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck it is. You know, it's Bruce Bruce Coleman, Coleman, dude. Yeah. The, I know who's at the front door. I know who's at the front door. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not that fucking girl from last night. Hey. I think she, I think she flew back to hey. Wisconsin. I think she's in Wisconsin tonight, dude. Yeah. I mean, may, may look. Hey. Wisconsin, she lives here. I, that's exactly <laughs> what I told her. I said, you know what? You're not going to fucking fool me. You live here in South Florida, don't you? I, she was like, she's like, you know, where, where, where do you, she where do you think I live? Hotel. I said, I said, you know, she's like, she says, where do you think I live? I said, I said, look. You're not some, from some fucking podunk town in goddamn Wisconsin <laughs> that I've never heard of. Some bullshit, whatever, like Emerald, whatever. I said, you're from, you, you're either from Chicago and you came here just to fuck around, or you're from here in South Florida. Well, what was her business here? What was the point? She told me that she was here on a, um, she was just coming on a, like a, a, like a private vacation. Just oh, private like, vacation. Like, Lies! Like, yeah. Celeste! <laughs> Lies! <laughs> I hope you're watching this. Uh, 100%. Hey, oh, she was she was so inquisitive about the show. She was like, oh, what is that? Oh, my God, you do this, you do this. And I'm like, look, look, you've already got me sitting here having a fucking drink with you. You don't have to fucking stroke my ego anymore, you know? Tell me, you know, tell don't me, pump me up Tell any. me you didn't tell her that you had 99 junior world team member Joey Colossal coming <laughs> Because I don't think I could salvage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Celeste, there she is right there. Oh, no, my she God. comes out the other side. No, honestly, um, she was, it was kind of funny because she did ask, um, like I told you, it, was, it felt very, the whole thing felt very awkward. It, it felt just like a movie. Like, like you know, it's, oh my God, she's got a high profile fucking working girl sitting here trying to. I feel, I feel you, you're in your element. Oh, I was. Oh, did I? oh man. Hey, <laughs> Might I been awkward for her, but I feel like you were right at home. I was playing that. Honestly, when she started talking to me, I said, you know what? I'm going to play into this fucking role just the same way you are. I know you're playing a fucking character. So, you know, what? I'm going to do one. too. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to dig in. I'm going to dig in. But I'm not going to. And I and I gave no inch, man. I just every time she would say and I'm telling you, you know, you have a conversation with somebody. OK, it's like the first time you met Desiree. Like you guys are sitting there. You, well, you you knew each other for a little bit longer from skating, but the first time you took you guys went on a date. Like there's inter, there's like there's there feels like there's actual interaction on that conversation even right. today. I mean, I've seen you guys interact to this day. There's there's actual like like you say something, she listens, and then you know processes it and then responds. Talks over me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tells me I'm a dipshit. Right. Goes back. <laughs> standard marriage. Yeah. But. Um, like what was happening, what was happening there, it was like, like these conversations would happen and, and it was like, oh my God, that's just so amazing. And then blah, blah, but, and, but don't you think I'm just beautiful? And, and I'm like, she didn't say that. Oh, fuck yeah. Several times. And I'm like, and I literally, I'd just be like, just, just because, because I knew where that was going. I'm just like, ah, you're okay. Dude, I, I think, I think it like, you can't help but imagine what the mer what the, the single scene would be like out there. And it's bad. <laughs> It's pretty bad, it's especially bad. for the have nots. Like, uh, I got to tell you, man, like, like those fake conversations, you're miserable. They, that, that's got to, that's got to ring last on what I want to do each day is, is, is that is put on that front and, and, and be, be, if you could be yourself and that happens to be charming, great. But if you're be, but like be some, it, be, it's exhausting, but I know it's I exhausting. can't, it's, 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 it's exhausting 
being putting on that persona all the time because you're Mr. And all for what? Three months later, you show him who you really are. Yeah. I don't like laying out of my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> going out no I uh, I might have met you out yeah but now we're staying in yeah and it's yeah. movie time that's right that's every right. night that's right and I poop with the door open that's exactly <laughs> yeah. how this you life is yeah my, my buddy Matt you Matt uh, right yeah <laughs> he'll call me hey how's it going with your date good 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 oh, I'm just taking a shit I said, where are you I'm in the lobby yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I told him I needed something out of my car he's in the lobby taking a shit you know like I love that dude oh he's I like, do I actually I do that all the time so like um like Fred Fred and Dustin we're on a, like a group chat in the morning or in like, I'll text them. I'm like, Hey guys, I'm having the most fantastic shit today. I hope, I hope your morning has started off as well as mine. <laughs> mine is usually like Instagram now has them too, but like Snapchat used to have like the filters. Yeah. And I got like, like, well, this is a ridiculous conversation. Like, <laughs> like I put, I put the filter on and I'm like, what's up guys? And I'm like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm emptying my butt on camera or whatever. And like, dude, why, why did you do this? This is what my life has come to. Hey, look, when you're 40, laughs. when you're 40 years old, man, what the fuck, dude? I just can't wait to be the guy that's sitting on my front porch spraying the fucking kids as they walk by with my goddamn water yeah. hose. Yeah, Stay yeah. off my grass, bitch. You know? How do you feel? How do you feel almost being 40? Dude, I love it, man. I love it. You excited about the 40s? Absolutely. Wow. Dude, I think the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life is my age at this point. Like, like, I think I was kind of an awkward looking person when I was younger. Like I was never really satisfied, like with the way I look. Um, right, right. Or you're not fully developed. Yeah. You're trying on different personas. And, yeah. 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 Like, sure. like, but, but at 40, like, yeah. like, honestly, like, I think the only, the, the best things about me are my tattoos and grays. Dude. Like we just talked about this. This guy's, <laughs> listen, listen, man. This guy's tapped into something. Here. <laughs> the tattoos have a fan club, uh, the muscles, the tattoos. I don't know. I don't know, man, but you, 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 you've read the, you read the room. My buddy Jay's like that. So he, uh, Jay was, man, he's probably the most, my best friend. He's probably one of the handsome guys I've ever met. And yeah, yeah. He's a big guy too. Uh, he's sizable, man, broad shoulders, but commanding presence. Like girls go out of their way to, to, to meet this guy. And, um, baldness couldn't have happened to a better guy. Like, it's just the, it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But, so what does he do? He's a, he's a cop. Yeah. And wouldn't you know, there's a whole fan club for bald cops. You'd be like the uniform, the shaped head. And he's still obviously a good looking guy. But he but shows up, but he shows up all the fucking time in his uniform and the bulletproof vest. He's always, he he's always big. tapped in to what the current is, yeah. you know? But like, man, man, I had to work hard for my uh, attention. So being like five, seven, five, eight, uh, you know, <laughs> when, when you're at the club, you're like, you know, I used to go with these, go with these guys and like, you want to do a lap? No, no, uh -uh. no, I don't want to do a lap. No. I'm, I'm not going to peacock around the, everyone's shoulders are up here. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. No one's going to see me yeah. anyway. Excuse I'm, me, I'm, I'm excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Fuck, dude. No, give me yeah, a like we've got a buddy, we've got a buddy of ours. Um, his name is, his name is uh, Trey. He's Joe the third. So his name's even more fucking made up than fourth. Right, right, right. Like fourth. Oh, he's Trey because he's the third. He's Trey because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's the third. White so, dude? huh? White yeah. And he's, he's, he's tall. He's a good looking guy, man. He's great at golf. And you know he's intelligent, and baldness, like you said, could not have fucking <laughs> to hit a better guy. To a better guy. Take this guy out of the uh, game. Fuck like, this yeah, guy. Is yeah, what I say. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, you know, you hit the fucking genetic lottery in so many ways, and you know what? God said, you know, enough. Enough. Yeah. yeah. As I, I tell Jay all the time, it couldn't happen. But you know, so my my dilemma is, we're holding on tight, right? Like, <laughs> please, dude. Uh, if my hair goes, I better be, I better be in a loving marriage. It's such a good relationship <laughs> by the time. Yeah. Like, and even then, even then, it's gonna affect your personality. <laughs> oh yeah. My barber, my barber, uh, has already made arrangements like turkey, for like the transplants. You know, these guys <laughs> take donor hair, whatever. But I'm thinking like, man, uh, oh god. So I've always had a full hair of thin, full head of thin hair. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like not good hair. Mm -hmm. But like, man, I tell you, uh, I'm just holding off. If I can make it to like 45, 50. <sighs> you know, yeah. Like my hair, like my hair, I've got obviously a lot of it. But it's it's thin. It's just and thin in general. Yeah, but there's so much fucking hair, and I'm like, oh my god, if this shit goes. But I tell you what, we talked yeah, about yeah. this earlier. Like Fred, Fred, like I'm very envious of Fred. Like he's got a great fucking head of hair. Oh no. Who went bald? Who went bald that you were telling me about? Harry. Harry. Harry went bald. How great is that? <laughs> I come mean, on. come on, you know, it's, come on. Are you reading my diary? How does this happen? <laughs> no, it happens to people, man. It happened to it happened to Jay Bone. It happened to uh, to uh, man. Harry lost his hair, but uh, I don't know. That guy's got other things going on too, man. I don't know. Um, Motherfucker, don't don't do this. Don't don't climb up on me now. Come on. 
Let's tap into this a little bit. Let's, let's go down this road a little bit. Come on. No, I'm a well wisher. I'm a well wisher. You, I, I hope, I hope come fine. on. You were you were reveling in Harry's baldness a little while ago. Let's. <laughs> I, I don't mind that he doesn't have hair. I think it's fucking great. Couldn't happen to a better person. But I hope he's doing well. I, I don't want. Uh, no. Actually, no, no, no. This is my. Girl. You never want anybody to be doing bad. You want them all to be doing. I bad. did. Yeah. Not just him. No, no. I mean, yeah. uh, part of my uh, immaturity there, for sure. Is there somebody you want to be doing bad? Everyone. You want. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough that I should. Su- it's not enough that I should succeed. It's others should fail. Uh, it is super immature. I've I, I, I've look, I, I've recognized the error of my ways. I know the truth. The, the truth is, uh, we were talking about family. Yeah. People. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's get grounded for a second. Look. The, 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 the truth is, the truth is. Oh my is, God! But you, you don't want to shit on Harry very no, much. You want, no, you want no, to get no, 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 Serious about it now? No, okay. no, no. Okay, come on. Not just him, but anybody, come on. Anybody, truly, truly, honestly, <laughs> honestly, on on or off camera, I would say this. Okay. We're at an age where, like, we're going through heavy shit, man. Whether it's our parents' health, sure. Whether it's yeah. uh, whether it's uh, your own situation is um, this is our life, and and, and 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 so any kind of problems that any of us had when we were fifteen weren't real problems. No. Yeah, yeah. So, but, 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 but this is real life, and and uh, and and I really do hope everyone, anyone, and everyone is doing well. I don't, and 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 also realizing that like, someone else's stumble somewhere, it doesn't affect me or make me any better or whatever. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, <laughs> minor things, hair loss, fucking. Yeah. I'm glad you're bald, motherfucker. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but, but what about what about Harry's mom? What's what's she up to? I don't know. I know. I heard. I dude. I, I watched go, the podcast. I heard go, four. He goes, go. "Good looking woman." Oh yeah, good looking woman. Harry, Joanne is a good looking woman. Uh, I've been so out of touch with, with you, motorboating son of a bitch. <laughs> you. <laughs> You're not goating me. You see what he's trying to do. I won't bite. I won't go. bite. I won't bite. You don't want to. You don't, you don't Harry, I hope you're doing good, buddy. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I hope. I hope Harry's doing well. I hope. I hope anyone that we. Anyone that I cross paths with that that. Uh, I honestly, I'll be honest, man. I you know like Fred and I. Oh, by the um, way, the, the distinction is, it, maybe we're not on the best of terms, whoever it is, right? Doesn't mean that I have a voodoo doll and I wish you're fucking getting it, you know? Like, they, you I'm, grab, I'm grabbing a fucking voodoo doll and I'm punching it right in the dick. I'm uh, saying, you know what, motherfucker? You're going to get this one. I'm the same all way. Right, all right, voodoo Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, that's true. I'm the, I'm the same deep down, but I think, I, think, I think ultimately, like I said, like the heaviness of life and the shit that it throws at us, man, I, you know? So that the, the petty kind of uh, wins and losses is forgivable. I don't I don't get into that. But you big old pussy. <laughs> you big old you big old, <laughs> you, you big old pussy. You know? <laughs> that you didn't you weren't saying that twenty minutes ago when we were outside. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I know. But no, we you know, like Fred and I, we 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 sit up there and we sit at the house and I mean we literally see each other every single day. And so we're sitting there, we have these conversations and they'll go kind of like this they'll just go in every every single direction and but it's always funny i love i love Goating him oh i love fucking poking the dragon i didn't realize that that was a beef that was and he has a legitimate beef i mean I oh mean, absolutely there's 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 i mean for for, for somebody that obviously with, with skating was a very important part of their life i mean right. and fred made a lot of money he got paid a lot of money to do that to skate to skate from like ACB yeah a- ec beast he got paid a hey, tremendous amount real of money fast, am i tightening or losing one no you're not doing anything i'm not doing anything. no okay. i'm not doing anything. no i don't move Look, it can come all the way off. One thing I gotta say, I don't. In my, in my, I know, in my, in my fourteen-year-old mind, I mean, this is kind of sexy right here. Am I interrupting or? Uh, oh. One thing I'll say about <laughs> you know, what reminded me when you're talking about fourth, uh, which for our age group changed things quite a bit, because I started even before you. I was on quads. Yeah. I don't think. Did you ever skate on quads? No. Okay, so I was, I was in the sport. I had like a whole career before you. Like yeah. You, then you came along, and inlines was the rage. But the racing was very similar when you came on, which was <clears throat> jockeying for position and setting yourself up for a strong finish positionally. I, to me, and our age group, I think fourth, probably on the heels of Chad, who was above him, yeah. fourth and guys like him changed the game where we didn't have a guy going to the lead with eight to go and ramping it up. That changed things. This is, Now it's no longer a... Um, he, he didn't allow an opportunity for the guys with a sprint to, to survive that kind of pressure. I mean, so pushed it hard. I mean, eight to go. Yeah. It got faster as the race finished, but not a whole lot faster. I mean, this dude was starting to ramp it up to where, well, when I say that you can only pass one person a straight away, yeah. there were none of the, the, and, 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 and it was, 
had to be a well set up pass. I mean, you could potentially ruin the things by forcing something. The bottom line is that changed the game big time. Man. Look, I, I'll tell you, <laughs> he had an engine. He, he had an engine <coughs> and it never went backwards. It wasn't like he was an outlier. I think people like him started going, oh, yeah. I, I can go to the lead and start ramping this thing up. And it's well, like, it's, fun. It, I, you know, growing up with him, like we like. It, it was weird. I mean, and you kind of, you, you kind of, I think might've seen some of that is that like growing up, like fourth and I obviously living near each other, stuff like that. We were extremely close, very, very close. Um, growing up, uh, it's about three thirty-five. Um, so we're, we were, we were extremely close, but then we got super competitive and kind of, and like, and grew apart. Sure, of course. But even, even when we were like kind of separated, like I honestly looked at him and I thought he was mentally handicapped. Like it not, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I did. I swear, and I tell him this all the time. Like, I swear to God, I thought you were fucking mentally handicapped because it's like, you just like your brain would shut off. Like you didn't need it. Like your brain stopped functioning and your body just kicked into fucking like habit and just did what it did. And it wasn't anything you said. It was when you looked at me that one time and went, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but you know, but yeah, you're, I think you're, you're absolutely right. So, cause I was asked this the other day by, by Chris, uh, Kessler, uh, Kiesler. He's, you know, every time I say his name, I'm not sure if I'm fucking saying it properly. Kiesler or Kessler. So I say them both every time, but he asked me, he's like, okay, well, why, wh if, if like the sport was so great back in the two thousands, why was there not somebody that filled the gap after Chad left. And I said, well, let me make sure you understand something very clearly is that Chad was still around in like 2004, 2005. He was leaving the ice to go to ice, um, you know, shortly after, you know, around that time after that, right? You had literally like 50% of the top 100 skaters left the sport between the years 2000 and 2003. Mass exodus. There was sure, yeah. nobody to fill the fucking gap because no one wanted to fucking skate anymore. They right. were just done with this shit. Everybody was tired of getting treated like shit. The sport wasn't going anywhere. Carrot being dangled in front of us to say Olympics, Olympics, Olympics. And that shit never happens because we've got a bunch of goddamn figure skaters mm -hmm. running the organization. A bunch of bullshit. But someone like Fred should have been the person to... Take the baton. Absolutely. hundred percent. Because you're absolutely right. When we were like, even like, even at our age, look, I mean, you know, Bob justice called, would call me, uh, the hammer. Well, yeah, because I could sprint two fucking laps super fast. He could literally do. Eight, and your last nine. name had an H. Yeah. yeah it was <laughs> so, Husk, hammer, hammer, Husk. Yeah. Boom. Was, yeah. Winner. We got Super it. creative. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. By the way, he refuses to come on my show. Why? Oh no. Like we'll talk all the time, but he was like, he's like, man, there's no way I'm coming on camera. Like he's like, he's like, there's no way anybody will find anything interesting that I have to say. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Well, You're my sentiments, Bob. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> that was my reluctance. For what it's worth, Bob. Uh, but I heard you and fourth, was it talking about like, oh, Dustin, maybe. The voice, because with Dustin, did some announcing. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Bob is the voice of the sport. I mean, and, and really could have been the voice of any sport. He is like the Bob Costas yeah. of everything else. I mean, like, like you think about back to some of these events, you think about how great they were, and you remember Bob's oh announcing. Oh, my God, dude. What he did. Elevated the feeling and the vibe of, of each thing, for sure, man. And, and he knew what he was doing. And it's funny because, like, like he would make, like, he was fun and friends with, with everybody. He was close and he would get out and talk to everybody. He was, that's the kind of guy Bob is. Well, so like even Gypsy talks about like when she was out there and it was senior women and Gypsy's always had a bigger, you know, frame. She always had a bigger ass and like Bob got on there and plays fat bottom girls. Oh, like no. when she gets out there and warms up. He's very clever, man. Oh, so yeah. like for instance, if you jumped, he would play like, I'll be back. Yeah. You know, like he had, he had like, he was, he was just uh, elevated the experience. Yeah, we, and I'm grateful for it. So he was overly familiar with you and your team and your region, because right. So, but he would also announce um, uh, our southern region. Yeah, and our nationals. That would be my opportunity to be like, how are those guys? Are they fast? Are they fast? <laughs> and he's like, they're pretty fast. Yeah, they're fast. And, and, and he, but he was also kind of you know encouraging. He's like, man, you're flying out there. He's like, yeah, they're pretty fast. I'm like, oh god, I knew it. Especially because you and I skate against fourth every other year. Yeah. So that when we're on the bottom of the food chain, it's like. Yeah, there's just some tough guys. God, this uh, it was hard. But he was my my spy. How, how they looking? How they looking? So yeah, because he was. I mean, he's he's from he's from what North Carolina or something like that. I think his real name is Eddie. Yeah, it is. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Eddie yeah. the Eagle. You know, he's always the thing. It's like hey, that's you, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, but, cool. I love Bob. But yeah, yeah, he like I I talked to him and he's like he's like yeah, there's absolutely no way I'm coming on your show. So I was gonna announce. I did announce. Um, 
one of the first NS- NSCs Miguel had out there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I was like, shit myself. Like, what do you want? Miguel wants Bruce buffer. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You realize I've never done this before. Right. And like, and I'm thinking I'm just going to do my best. Like, I don't know. So I hit up Bob who had done something. Uh, he had done that NSC previous before and after. And he ended up, um, so I called him like, man, what is your, what's, what's, and he goes, dude, it's a dog and pony show. You're just going to have to kind of fly by. And I'm like, thanks for nothing. <laughs> like, that's nothing. <laughs> I think they got Rob now. You know, Rob Skate. Are you familiar oh, yeah, with Rob? Absolutely. Dude. Yeah. I'll a talk couple to, people. I, talk to I, Rob I, a lot. I don't want to play on your show. I got a couple names for you. No, right. Rob's going to come on. Rob would be fantastic. Rob's going to come on. You have to have Rob. You have to have, uh, you had Stephen Carter. Yeah. You have to have, haven't you butt heads with Jonathan Pasquella? Okay, listen, listen, listen. I know him as Jonathan Bell. Yeah. I think his name changed. Yes. But you've... Yeah. But whether it be through Zoom or online... I'd love to have him on. You'd li- you'd, en- you'd enjoy his company. Yeah. Here's, here's what I was thinking. He's about. a person I'd rather have in the studio, though. For sure. Yeah. And here's why. This is what ends up happening. I, by the way, I've interacted with that guy both online and in I don't, person. You know, honestly, and, I, and, I, and I've talked... Let me be very clear about this. I, I've talked about him before. And I think he's a very intelligent person. I think he's a great guy. The we we we're, we don't agree on a lot of right, shit. Right, right, right. And and quite honestly, I'm not going to engage it in in a very negative way. Right. In, with a lot of these people. And so, like with him, what I'll do is I'll just talk about him as if he's not in the fucking room. I know he's sitting there listening. <laughs> like, but I but I'll make but but, but like I'm just gonna well, fucking. He's one. So uh, same. I not not every position he takes is like like I'm on board with it. Right. Yeah. But, but he understands and can defend his position way better than I can mine. He, uh, the, the, but, yeah, but my but point going, is, but going black militant on me, you know, when yeah, when, when, when yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. well, first off, when you're, you know, when you are what you are and everything else, come on, man. Just, he's, he's approaching it from a different perspective. Than yeah. we are, uh, but I, but I, what my, my point, like I'm just as black as you are, dude, to land my plane <laughs> <laughs> on the heels of yours, black as he is <laughs> to land my plane is. When you're at odds with, because so, it's always the same characters online. These people, you with that train's never late. Whenever something happens, these people are going to speak out in this regard. These people are going to speak out in that regard. And I, I saw this coming. You guys are butting heads on a couple of things. Sure. Uh, but when you take it out of that perspective, for instance, in person, I think you'd enjoy the guy's company. Yeah. And 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 he can speak intelligently about a variety of things. The guy is 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 a bizarrely uh, educated person on a lot of these things. But but that would make for an interesting. You know what I mean? You don't want yeah. a cheerleading squad. You want people who are combative. And, yes. and, and, and this guy has the ammo, dude. He's a, and actually, I look forward because whether I agree with him or not, I want to I want to see what the well-informed opinion on the other side is. And he has it. You know, the guys, the guys I have no fucking clue. Why, why the fuck Let's find out, baby. Yeah. Celeste, come on up. <laughs> the phone's right there. You want to answer it? Um, I, can't, I can't reach it. Hello? Nope. See, they hung up, right? Yeah. I get that shit all the time. Mr. Husk. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna turn this. Uh, I'm gonna turn this light on. Hold on. Get a little dim out here. Yeah, we've got the cloud for me. We can push this shit over. Do you edit this? You, you know. Oh, fuck that. We're leaving that in. I'll leave that in. What do, we, what do I care? I mean, seriously. Look. look Shout out if, to everybody who has stuck with us this far. Yeah. Look, I guarantee you. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. Do you see when people are dropping off? It's gotta be in the first 15 minutes. Absolutely. Okay. So generally, I'll tell you. Like, like most time, like on YouTube, things like that. Um, there's generally a large, a mass. I don't care who the fuck you are. I don't care what show it is. There's usually a large mass exodus within like the first three minutes of every show for everybody. Um, you get a click through rate where people chose where they come from and, and how long they sit there. But generally I'll tell you, man, like <laughs> the worst ones are when I'm sitting there by myself. It's just me ranting. People will watch it, but they'll watch it in spurts. Like you can see that on your end though. Yeah. Uh, oh, I can see it. Like that's but, me. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see people like come on and they'll watch it for like, and then, and then they'll drop off in like three to five minutes and then they'll come back and they'll be, you see that. Yeah. It's generally like these shows where you'll see like this. It's it's instead of instead of it being like this, it's literally like this. Right. 
Well, it's a gradual fall off. We're down to three or four, right? At this <laughs> can, I, can I be myself now? Uh, dude, I'm telling I, I, look. Now it's my wife, your mom, <laughs> like maybe, I you think know. My, I think, I, like, like I know for a fact, like, I put it on there. Like, you can sit there and you can subscribe and you can put an alert on there so when someone goes live, I know the moment I put a fucking video up, my mom's the first one to click oh, on it. Oh, it's the best. Yeah, she's, mom, you're the, you're the greatest. Shout mom. out. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> but, man, um, actually, kind of funny uh, going back to... Uh, you, you, you've brought up the Celeste thing, so I think we should. I think I should fucking uh, own go, it. Go into that a little bit. So, um, last yesterday, yesterday, um, and I'll try. I'll try to make sure I give you as much of the story because I think there's some some of the story I le- I might have left out. Well, do share. Yeah. So anyway, so last night I I got back from the trade show and I I wanted to go downstairs and eat, but I wasn't like I wasn't gonna sit down at the restaurant and all, go through all that nonsense. And the one down here is constantly busy, so when I walk down there, there it's, it's the bar. There's a bar outside, and I could sit down and eat. Well, when I get there, there's uh, two older couples on my on my right side. I think it's like a I think there's some uh, I don't know like from Virginia or something like that, and um, or Tennessee, whatever. And then on my left is this older couple from Boston. And when I find out, when they find out from Houston, like we go, like they're all of a sudden they love Houston, even though like we start getting into the fucking talk about, you're probably not a huge, like Houston Astros, Boston Red Sox kind of guy, but right. you know, you do know about the cheating scandal and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So we start talking about like the cheating and stuff like that, but they love Houston because they went down there and they said they spent an obscene amount of money on like the, the fucking um, Super Bowl. The last time the Patriots were in the Super Bowl there in Houston and playing against Atlanta, I guess. Yeah, I guess Atlanta. Anyway, um, so we start having this conversation and we're having a great time. And I notice, like I said, it's a big circular bar, like just a big round bar. And right in the dead center, as if to put up a fucking flag, to put a sign out there to say, advertise her presence is this girl sitting there. She, Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just sitting there by herself and she's a great looking woman, mm-hmm. great looking woman. Mm-hmm. But she's sitting there as if it's like a fucking movie, reading a book. Reading a book and, and I swear to God. I, I, hair up and glasses. I might not have even told you. Actually, her hair was up. <laughs> her hair was up. <laughs> But she was, it was funny because she was just sitting there very, very much like this, like just trying to be very, you know, proper, didn't, did, didn't seem natural at all whatsoever. So I'm sitting here and, you know, I, I'm observing, so I'm watching and I'm talking to these people over here. And next thing you know, is bartender comes over and he says, um, he says, well, sir, uh, he says the lady at the bar or lady, lady down here would like to buy you a drink. Harlan. Yeah. I was like, oh. Oh, okay. All right. She's, 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 she's the fucking alpha so far. So, uh, so she, they, they, they bring me, um, they bring me my drink and I'm sitting there and, and, uh, and I don't acknowledge her. I say nothing whatsoever. I, I just, I, uh, I put my, like this, I just, I find this to be a risky strategy, but proceed (laughs) onward, onward. So like, I, and so I just, Cheers, and then I continue talking to the people to my left, and and like I I could see this like, is a conscious decision to play it this oh, way. Yeah, at this point, because I'm like I have I mean look I, mean, I hope you at home can appreciate the gamesmanship. <laughs> yeah, you no. know what I mean. This is like some this was this was complete gamesmanship. This All right, was, general. All right, general. What was the next play? Yeah. So I like I mean, and in, in, in my mind, I'm like okay, it, like uh, uh, I could care less how thanks. this goes. Yeah. Like anyway, where were we? Yeah. The Boston Astros. And the, the fucking, it doesn't right. matter to me. So <laughs> I continue on having the conversation with them. And finally, I'm like, okay, well, I need to get up and go to the bathroom. And I have to go that direction. Mm-hmm. So I walk over, and next to her um, is, is an open spot. There's, there's groups of people on both sides of her that are large, larger groups of people, and they're just sitting there, whatever. Next to her is kind of an open spot, just nothing there. So I kind of just back in there, big old, big old caboose of mine, and I just lean against the bar. And, and I just say, hey, I want to thank you. Thank you for the drink. I appreciate it. Um, she's like, well, it took you long enough to come over Ooh. here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She called Feisty, me out right away. Feisty. Okay. Yeah. It took you long enough to come over here and talk to me. And I was like, well, yeah, yeah. Well, this yeah. ain't my first rodeo. Well, <laughs> I flat out told her. I said, hey, you know what? I said, uh, you're going to keep that smart ass fucking mouth up. I said, I can buy my own drinks. I said, I don't, you know. And uh, and she was like, that's when she she looked at me and she was like. She said, dad, Whoa. don't talk to me Dude. that way, dad. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I was like, but I said, no, I appreciate it. Um, I'm just messing with you. But I'm, I said, I'm going to go to the bathroom, actually, but I wanted to stop by. <laughs> I'm going to empty my butt. And yeah. when I come back, <laughs> we're going to pick up right where we That's left right. off. I'm going to go stink up the fucking back half of the restaurant <laughs> right now, and then I'll come back here in a minute. Um, <laughs> and so it was funny. When I came back, I didn't even stop and talk to her. Like, I walked right past her and went straight back to the fucking couple from Boston. Bold move, my friend. And so we, the, the couple from Boston, we get into a whole conversation about COVID. Like, just full blown, like talking about their, you know, their governor and all this other bullshit. And they were, they were kind of conservative. They found the right guy. Yeah. So, so we we were having a, we're having this great conversation. And finally, like I walk over and the, she's not made a fucking move. I'm like, Oh, she's like, like she's doubling down on this fucking, like the whole thing. I've made sure like 20, 30 minutes passed before I fucking acknowledged her whatsoever. And she, but she's just fucking staying strong with it. And the next thing I know, man, she, like, I go over and I, I, I sit down next to her. We start talking and having a conversation. And in my mind, the whole time I'm thinking, this is going to cost me. This is going to be very expensive. Like this is going to be, this is going to be the most expensive vagina, uh, more than a divorce, you know? Well, you have it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh. So be it. Yeah, no, gonna... You know what? You can't charge that on the American Express. I'm like, you know, like, uh, how many Hamiltons are we talking about? <laughs> so I'm so like, but, but, but to, it, your, to your delight, she was a genuine person. She actually was, uh, well, you, it was, it, well, yeah. At the end of the night, it turned out she was not. She an happened escort. to, is like refreshing to finally find an easy girl. <laughs> it's like, I thought, you know, we're like, oh my, thank this. God that you were just, you were You're just, just slutty. <laughs> you were just slutty and there was nothing else. There's nothing. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, just, but it was, but dude, it was it, like, <laughs> like we're sitting there and I, and I wanted to eat and it, again, everything that was coming out of her mouth, the whole, the whole conversation literally felt like it was, should be in a movie. And like I said, there was no substance. And I was going to go back to this conversation, what I was going to say about like when you and Desiree would have this conversation, like there's interaction, you guys are, you know, maybe she rolls her eyes, thinks you're a fucking retard or whatever. And, but you, there's interaction. You, there's, when we were talking, like she would say something, so she would ask me something and I would respond. And then she would literally just be like, oh, that's great. Okay, well, don't you think I'm beautiful? And I'm, and, and like these words, like, like, like it was so like something's fucked up here. Either, either this is like, again, either this is some setup. It's going to cost me money or I'm going to end up in a ice bath with my fucking kidney missing or, you know, like she, you made at some point in the night, you made peace with that. Yeah. At some point, cause if, I was if like, this is how it ends. This is how it yeah, ends. Like, I fell I for it. You, it. You I, in. I, I did. I doubled down. I bit into it. Like, <laughs> I, like we're, we're going to roll with this yeah. fucking story for a while. We're going to see where this goes. Um, and I'm like, but the whole time, like, so we went like she, like I've said, I'm hungry. And so she was like, well, I know a really good Italian restaurant. So I swear to God, man, again, you're like, like where I'm at, this is a legitimate hotel. You walk in lobby, all that other bullshit. She wanted to go change her clothes. And the Italian restaurant is like a block from her hotel. So when we go to her hotel, I swear to God, just like a fucking seedy hotel out of a movie, not, not, I'm not shitting you. It's like five steps to walk up to go into the lobby. The desk is right there. And then you just walk out the side door of the lobby, some swinging door. And then all of a sudden you're like in the internal courtyard of this pool over here's the restaurant. Her hotel room is like right here. I swear to God, I'm seeing this. I'm like, Oh, this is, this is, this is exactly where a fucking high end escort prostitute, you know, hooker is going to be staying to bring, you know, whatever. It's not too expensive. This is solidifying your fantasy now. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Like, and, and, and I did go You're down like, that road. You wanted it somebody like, this is so disappointing. Are you I not? Did. Are you not an escort? Yeah, like at some point I did in my mind. I'm like, wait, you're just a real person. <laughs> like you're just. Oh, you're just. You're just a slut. This is not. This is not what I expected. This is no fun for me. But. Man, yeah, like I said, we went down and we had Italian food, and but like the whole time, like she took me to this Italian restaurant, and she's like, we're we're having a conversation, and at no point in all of the conversation, like the next thing I know, she speaks three or four fucking languages. Like she's speaking Spanish, she's speaking Italian, she understands German. Oh, me gusta. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're not some from you're not from some podunk fucking town in Wisconsin, you know? I'm like, first off, you don't have an, a Wisconsin accent. Like, but it turned out she was. 
Man, okay, I don't know if she actually was. I didn't see her driver's license. I did end up seeing her credit card and had her name on it. It, had, it said Celeste on it. But I was like, but in the, still in my mind, I'm like, can, you know, you can fake all that stuff. You can come up with some, you know, alternative, I, you know, whatever. Just to get, just to get some. Just to get some tatted meat. <laughs> just to get, just to get us some cheap, <laughs> just to get some cheap sex. <laughs> is this what you're up to, Celeste? Is this, uh, is this your angle? What's your problem? It was, it was, dude, it was the, it was, I'll be honest, man. Like, like, like I told you, it was the weirdest thing because it did feel like it was straight out of a movie. It's like, how do you come down to South Florida? I'm here on business. I'm here to, you know, go to a convention. And then this happens at a hotel bar. It's a movie. You're living a dream. What you are, you're 39, right? Yeah, I'll be 40 in two months. When you're 55, you're going to be like, remember that time? I was <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you're going to think back to these times. like, and, you, and, and you'll trick yourself into thinking it was every weekend when it yeah. was really just like the best weekend. No. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you, man, I actually um, – I actually, so I had, I had intentions of doing like a, a New Year's Eve show it ended up just being like three hours of live of just me and Fred sitting there and bullshitting. But I intended on live on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Live, live on, on Facebook, man. <laughs> Hello, all three of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mom, us again. Both moms, both moms, both moms. And one of my ex-wives who likes to watch every goddamn thing I do. Does she watch all of them? Oh, that fucking bitch monitors every fucking thing. Stop watching. What's her oh, name? No. What's her name? I can't, I don't name names. Uh, I never name names, but we'll call her number three. Actually, sorry, not number three. Number three's great. Number two. Number two. Well, number, number two, two knows she's number two. Number, yeah, but number two, I'm not gonna say her fucking name. No, no, But no, but, but dude, she even comments on my fucking, on, on my shit. Like, she'll comment and she'll just talk shit. Like, I found one of her comments the other day, like, talking shit. Like, like YouTube, like, YouTube and Facebook, I guess, blocks her um, because she's so fucking vile. Like, they, they, for whatever reason, it goes into some spam folder. Whereas opposed to everybody else's comments, but she's such a fucking dirtbag. Are you guys beyond reconcile? It's in. Oh, big time! She's a fucking scumbag, total scumbag. Like I, I haven't like. I'm glad we got onto this. Yeah, total. Like, like, <laughs> like, like, hundred percent honesty. Hundred percent honesty. I haven't talked to my daughter in 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 years because of her. Because of her, because she's such a miserable fucking person. And I say years. It's been like. Well, she is she polluting the well there. I mean. Like, oh, big time, big time. Like. That sucks. Like my daughter and I, my daughter and I, like in, in, uh, 2019 to, uh, 2020, we were literally like almost talking like every single day. And all of a sudden her mom, swear to fucking God, um, uh, it's November, it's November of, of 19 and we're in DC and I'm talking to my daughter all of the time. I've got the fucking call logs and all the bullshit. I've got text messages I'm talking to my daughter all the time. Her mom sends me a medical bill. That says, hey, could you pay this? And I said, well, n not a problem. I'll pay my half. Not a problem. I'll take care of it. I said, but can you send me the bill? Cool. She sends me the bill, and I look at it, and I'm like, well, that's a problem. I have a problem with this. I said, I pay for insurance for my daughter. I said, part of my child support, I pay insurance. This is a $5,000 bill, and there's no insurance applied here whatsoever. She's like, yeah, they don't take it. And I said, no, bullshit. Medical provider, they take fucking insurance. Did you go out of network or something? I have no fucking clue. So I said, look, I said, Monday, I'm, I'm in Washington, D.C., uh, where they're on a family vacation. I said, I'm going to go, and I said, Monday, not a problem. I said, I'm going to call the doctor, I'm going to call them up, and I'm going to make sure that they're applying her, her health insurance. Well, uh, long story short, either, either, either the whole thing was bullshit or she doesn't have health insurance, which I pay for. I pay for health insurance. She's so, on your plan. Well, no, no, no. I pay her. I give her the money, and she's supposed to provide the health insurance. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but there's nobody there that actually verifies well, that. Well, I was going to say, where's the oversight? Yeah. That's the problem. Is there's the nobody in the state of Texas that's going to verify whether or not she has health insurance on my daughter. So, when I tell her, I said, look, I'm going to call on Monday, and I'll, and I'll make sure. I said, that shouldn't be a $5,000 bill. We'll get health insurance. It's, you know, things to take, you know, just regular shit. Oh, she loses her fucking mind. She starts cussing me out. She starts, I mean, I've, I've still got the text messages. It's just a bunch of nasty shit. That same night, like, she starts texting my dad. And she starts texting him, like, um, you know, why don't you talk to your son? This is bullshit. And he's just like, he's like, hey, look. He's like, I don't want to be involved. Hell, the last time, the last time my dad was involved, like, like, they had to take her to court. 
They tried. They had a sewer because she was. She was. I mean, fuck. She was just nasty. She's just a nasty person. Anyway, I have a text message that's on my dad's phone from her, from her on my dad's phone that says, "I hope you fucking die," and I can't wait until you're dead and I can have Mackie spit on your grave. Who's Mackie? Our daughter. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, she's, 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 she's literally saying this. Clearly the most classy person. Yeah, ever. she's a fucking scumbag. And so. So you guys aren't getting it back together. That's not going to No, happen. definitely not. <laughs> well, I mean, I, and, and if, 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 if God has any sense of humor, if God had, has any parity what's, or, or balance whatsoever, she's going to be going to prison. She's actually gotten her third. She got her third DWI. And um, in the state of Texas, that's a felony. Um, I'm not sure if it's ever, if how it's gone yet, but she actually had my daughter in the car. It's a felony after three? Yeah. Florida's one, dude. Yeah. DUI is a felony here. DUI? Is a felony. Here. Yeah. So there. So yeah. one, one is whether you're guilty of it, not, it's costly. I mean, yeah. you're, you're dealing with a lot of uh, courts, a lot of attorneys. I don't speak from experience. I just, I, I work for the sheriff's office. You know, I, I see like um, how that plays out. Well, in the year 2000, I'll be honest, I was down here, Pensacola Nationals. Um, I wasn't drunk, but I got stopped for speeding. Sure. I had, I had been drinking. Um, I actually got, in, it was, it was year 2000. I got stopped. Um, I, I refused to blow or I refused the breathalyzer test. I, fa I passed the field sobriety test, but I, I refused. It was an automatic one year suspension on my driver's license. Did they detain you anyway. Uh, they actually did not detain me. They let me go. When was this? They had another You're... coach. It was year 2000. We were in Pensacola. I don't know if things have changed. I mean, I not, so that was a common thing back then, which was don't blow. Yeah. You know, you can always have a fighting chance, but that is an admission as an arrestable thing sure. alone. So as that, is that, it is in Texas, that sort of backfired now is like the don't blow, but it's, I mean, that's heavy shit, man. Yeah. DUIs, so, let alone three of them. Three I never, I never had an, I never, I never, I never got a DUI. I never got a DWI. It was nothing on my record. Um, but anyway, yeah. So she actually has three DWIs. This last one was so bad. It made the fucking local newspapers because wow. the cop was following her for like five minutes. Like she drove through someone's yard, like almost took out a fucking stop sign, a bunch of shit. She actually, it was, it was ironic when I was in court going through all of my bullshit back in like 2011, 2012, there happened to be a girl in court that I recognized she's in there and I realized, and she's in like she got in trouble for uh she got a dwi and the judge gave her 90 days in county jail come to find out her i had introduced her to my ex-wife they became friends they remained friends after i divorced my number two they go out they're drinking one night they've got my daughter oh no they're in my ex-wife's car that I paid for, which really doesn't fucking matter, but they're in the car late at night. They've got my daughter. Ex-wife is so drunk that the other girl agrees to drive. Who's probably just as drunk. She's right? just as drunk. Has my daughter in the back seat. Daughter's not back. Buckled oh, up. Oh man. They get into a wreck. They run into a wall or some bullshit. Fucking breaks my daughter's nose. I mean, that's outrageous. But her, oh, it's ridiculous. But my, but, but her mom doesn't get in trouble because she's in the passenger seat. The other, the other woman gets 90 days in county jail. But you know, ah, man, there's a lot of layers to that. You know, oh, there's a lot. There's, there's, yeah. That's, that's shame, man. It's but it's, but, but so anyway, yeah. So we don't, um, yeah, she's a fucking scumbag, but she 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 checks my shit. But she's watching. Oh, goddamn no, she's watching. She's one of the fucking views. So I want to thank you. Yeah. Put my fucking daughter in the back seat <laughs> with no goddamn seatbelt. No, oh, I thank God that my daughter. I tell you what, my daughter's beautiful, and I in in look my she. Shout out to Mackie. And Brax, my Braxton. Her mom. Who's, her, the, who's the third one? Who's it? Braxton, Mackie, yeah. Jax, Jax. Yeah. Um, her mom. Mackie's mom will literally, um, she'll send me, she'll send me texts, um, like around Christmas and New Year's with pictures of, of our daughter and stuff like that, which is great. Which but, is literally the least you can do. Yeah. <laughs> which um, is like the bare minimum. Well, I mean, look, I'll back this up. I'll back this up. And I don't know if I've ever, I've ever told you about this, but so I told you that part of, part of the conditions of, of my, of my parole was that I was banned from Montgomery County. So a long time, I just could not step foot in Montgomery County. 
And I never violated that. Never, never, not one time. Never came close to it. So this is like, uh, uh, we'll call it February of 2017. Yeah, it's February 2017, right? I get a call from my parole officer, and they're like, "Hey, come on, come on to the office. Need to check in." When I get there, they're like, "Oh, hey, we're gonna put a we're gonna put an ankle monitor on you uh, because we have a report that you've been in Montgomery County." I said, "Well, that's strange." I said, "I know I haven't been in Montgomery County, but what proof do you have?" They said, "Oh, somebody reported that you your truck. They saw your truck there uh, with your company logos on it." And I said, "What day?" So like, I'm in there. I'm in there like on. Uh, say Thursday, right? I'm in there on a Thursday and they said, Oh, we, they saw you, they saw you on Tuesday. And I said, well, that's really interesting because, uh, my company truck had, I had the logos put on it yesterday. I said, I have the photos from the shop of when they put them on, of when they put them on. I said, I said, and I said, I look, the company owns, you know, fifth, you can tighten the things on the sides there. Yeah, yeah, I'm on. Um, the company owns like 15, 16 vehicles. And I said, they can easily, it could have easily been another vehicle. And they're like, oh no, they, they were definitive. They saw you. I said, okay, well, but they had no pictures of me. I said, but I said, I have pictures of my truck at the decal shop just yesterday, getting the fucking decals put on. So you it's have a, a bunch of trucks though, right? Yeah. But I said, this is impossible that it could have been me. So anyway, they put an ankle monitor on me for 90 days because she, just to verify that you're not that guy. yeah but she called it was her and, and i had never been there but she called the fucking state of texas just to fucking make well play number up. two yeah it's fucking bullshit but, <laughs> but then get this man get this this is when they finally woke up to her fucking bullshit then when they woke up and they realized that she's just a fucking asshole just trying to be a troublemaker i'm in west texas I don't have to ask permission to go anywhere in Texas. I can travel anywhere in Texas. Just that county. Yeah. I can't just go to Montgomery County. So I'm in West Texas. It's an eight-hour drive from my house. I'm in my hotel. I'm on the seventh floor of the Elegante Hotel in, in, in Odessa, Texas. My truck is parked downstairs. My parole officer calls me, and she says, Hey, Mr. Husk, where are you right now? And I said, Well, I'm in, I'm in Odessa, Texas. I'm in the hotel on the seventh floor. She says... She says, well, that's where I show your ankle monitor. She says, I show that. She says, but your ex-wife is on the phone right now trying to tell us that you're in Montgomery County. So it works, it works in your favor that you had the ankle monitor. That's absolutely, great. absolutely. And I said, no, I said, you, I said yeah, you, you know I'm not there. And she says, well, she says, I'm actually kind of glad this happened because it, this yeah, puts yeah, all yeah. that out shows, there. It so. shows kind of what you're dealing with. Yeah, so they, they from that point on, man, uh, everything's been great. You know, they, they know she's a fucking asshole. They know she's... I mean, the same thing, honestly, the same, look, I, I, do you think I, you'll always live in Texas? Yeah, man. I love Texas. Long-term. Yeah. I That's love Texas. Home. Yeah. Love Texas. Now I'll be honest. Like I, I spent so much time down here in South Florida. I couldn't see myself living down here. It's a vacation. It's even that man. Cause if I have my choice for a vacation, I'm going to a fucking mountain somewhere. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting out in the middle of nowhere where I can't talk to anybody, see anybody. It's easy to get your fix of the Caribbean vibe. I mean, some people never get tired of it, but I mean, we're spoiled with it here, but like I, I could see mountains as the, is the switch up. So a lot of people enjoy like uh, Colorado, like, Wyoming. Like I dig the Bahamas, like Florida's, Florida's cool. It's just, well, it's you know, more of the same though. Besides a little bit di different vibe because it's more Caribbean, obviously. But, but but I mean, selling beach and palm trees and coconut water, it's kind of the same. You know what I mean? Like, but Yellowstone has everybody wanting ranches in Montana, uh, and they want they want to stop. Around. Yeah. Do you watch Yellowstone? No, fuck no, I haven't seen it yet. What? Do you watch it? Yeah, I'm, and I'm, yeah. I watch every show. <laughs> I watch every show. Have you seen The Last Kingdom? Oh yeah. I fucking love The great, Last man. Kingdom. I'm Uhtred, son of Uhtred. Yeah, Uhtred. Yeah. <laughs> Destiny is all. Yeah, Uhtred of Bedenburg. I got to tell you. Yeah, dude. Be Bedenburg. Are whatever, you up to date? Yeah. There's a new one that just came out, uh, right? Well, it's I, not out yet. Are you no, up to date with So as far as everything that's been out, I've seen them all. Oh, man. So I can't wait for the next season. But I'm, I'm the, the, the pace at which that show moves yeah. makes other shows like Yellowstone – I mean, something, something better start happening on that ranch. Yeah, it feels I mean, like yeah. it feels like they're on fucking uh, downers on like compared to like Vikings and and. So when you watch The Last Kingdom, you never, never do you watch an episode and think nothing happened. I could have just skipped this one. Yeah. It's it moves, dude. Always. You don't like that guy? Stay tuned. That guy's gonna die pretty soon. I mean, yeah. it just it moves. You yeah, know? and 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 die badly. Like I, yeah, I'm I'm so in. I can't even. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely. And and I'm a show freak. So I mean, to, I'm speaking high praise. 
I don't want to oversell it. Last Kingdom is the titties. Uh, <laughs> Yellowstone. I was into Yellowstone, but then like you know, you're watching like the scenic things, and you're like, God. I mean, it, part of it is like a screensaver. It's just like this is beautiful. It's Montana, yeah. Wyoming, whatever. And then the other part is like a Ram car commercial, but it's in the in the show. Yeah. And then they're like promoting other shows within the show. It's a bizarre thing, but something better start happening on that ranch. It's a little slow. And Kevin yeah. Costner with his growl. So you don't watch the show, or you haven't watched? I've the show? never seen it. I've never seen a show do this before. So I've been compared to the, I guess there's a character in there that wears Don't um, say rip a lot of black. Oh no. Is it him? Yeah, you're the rip. See, man, you're fulfilling somebody's fantasy. Yeah, that's you all see it is. that? You're the yeah. Texan. You're the bad boy rip. But you've tapped into this strategically <laughs> to get laid and it's working. It's fucking Aren't you uh, you stupid uh, motherfuckers? You're not you're not onto this guy. Yeah, he's ripped. Uh, <laughs> he's ripped from Yellowstone. No, yeah, no, no, no. That's that, 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 okay. So that's who the character is. He's a, he's just so likable. He's a good guy. He's a tough guy, and he's uh, sizable. And uh, but ripped. Okay. And actually, you know who it is. You know who it is. He's the guy. He's from Dazed and Confused. He was um. No, not Dazed and Confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not Matt McConaughey. He's one of the. Oh, he might be. He's one Matt. of the kids from from Dazed and Confused. Okay. What's his real name? Colton, I don't know. Yeah, is yeah. It? He's from, yeah, he's one of the characters from Days and Confused. How about Fast and Furious, the one with Tyrese? Yes. He's the yeah. bad guy. Yeah. yeah. He looks like a grown-up version of, of like, 16-year-old Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Yeah, curly hair. Right, but but once someone connects those dots, you, you can see it, you can hear it. Yeah. But until someone does, you're like, that's Rip. And he's just this country boy, and, and he's this heavy set, like, uh, no-nonsense country boy. Yeah. And but dope show. I love I love Yellowstone, but I'm so happy that you're into the Last Kingdom. We could have been talking about that the last time. <laughs> I love Last Kingdom. Have you seen Have you seen Vikings? Okay, my mistake was watching the Last Kingdom in its entirety, jumping straight to Vikings, which goes back to like whenever the first episode was. Yeah, a little hokey pokey, a little like clunky compared to the. And I understand that the production value, everything gets better. Sure. But it's hard. I, I shouldn't have done this. I, I shouldn't have. It's so unfair to watch like tombstone and then be like oh have you seen this western it's like well i don't want to see a western right after tombstone tombstone's the shit yeah so like i you know what i mean like it, it sets such a high bar i'm so into utrid and that whole yeah. storyline that this guy with the blue eyes and the witch and by the way it's a little like um like a community theater compared to the high production value of the last Kingdom. what do i know i don't know dude yeah yeah last kingdom is fucking awesome it's a great show. Here. yeah okay. dude it's such a it's that's such a great show but yeah i mean Look, I started watching Vikings back in like 2000, like 17, 18, right, right, right. when it first came out. But People it, was on, love it. it was on History Channel. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's you know now it's like a, a full blown thing on like what Netflix or Amazon. Well, there's overlap, right? Like 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 Rag uh, Ragnar. Yeah. Uh, there's overlap. Some of the players are, uh, I guess, are involved in one show or involved in the other. What do you think? Going off topic here, the Joe Rogan thing going on now. Are you up to date with this? Oh yeah. What do you think? Well, I think it's well, which hunt? Ish, ish. I think it's fucking crazy. Um, Which part? What are so we talking about? We're talking, the, Neil, so, the Neil Young pulling his stuff off the... So I'll, I'll, I'm going to start or, with... Or the N-word stuff. I'm going to start with the most current part of it. The so, N-word stuff. Like, I tease and I talk about it all the time. Like, look, I was in... Like, being in prison, like, I was accepted... Like, I could only be accepted by mostly, like, the black people. So, like, like I openly all the fucking time, like, having the black guys on my show and shit be like, yeah, I'm fucking black. Like, like I don't... Like, there's nothing wrong with, you know being being irreverent and fucking around with people right. i have never and 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 i don't and i'm not sure that there's really ever a a time or a place or even a even an irreverent time for when the like saying the n-word is okay like i just don't i just don't like for me personally like i don't know every scenario where where he said it and all okay. those different episodes um but for me personally i just can't ever find like there's an appropriate time to say it me personally like like I'm not a huge rap guy, especially like 2000 rap, like like 90s rap, like Tupac, Biggie, Nas, stuff like that. Love that kind of stuff. Sure, of course. But even when they go to say the N word, like oh, I go, you, I, you, you, yeah, I go silent for a second. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you, you know, ra I'm rapping back and forth. I'm going, fuck it. I'm going hard. Then I'm like, yeah, you know, love Cali kind of shit. You know, uh, California love all that. But <laughs> I, so I don't, I don't know. And I, but I'm, I'm certainly not going to support him saying that. Like, I just, I just don't, me personally, I don't think that there's ever an appropriate time for that. Well, his apology, if you just take it at face, face value. Which I watched, of course. Is that trend, not trends, times have changed. Like, there was a time, there was a time when we were younger, gay slurs. Sure. If you, if you called someone a gay wad. Yeah. Or God forbid, this is like fight level. Yeah. Fight level. Yeah. You fucking fat. Yeah. Bro, that's like. 
you're not really calling me a homosexual. You're you're putting a line in the sand like I'm saying something hurtful to you. Yeah. Fuck you. You're completely you. demeaning who you right, are as right, an right. individual. And 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 I don't think there's anybody our age that didn't get caught up in something earlier that later is not in vogue. Like we've all grown. And you realize, oh, man. so there are phrases, there are things that you can say that are hurtful after the fact. So to his credit, what he said was, he hasn't said it in like five, six years. And I'm not on paid by Joe Rogan to fucking, you know, I, I don't care. I don't, I don't fucking care about you're, not, you're swinging from his ball sack, right? But I cool. understand the, the dilemma in as much as he, it's something that he chooses not to say anymore. But what, sure. when he did say it, I, and I think this is the part that's important, the way he outlines it and the way I personally feel about it. The way he has ever said the word. You, oh, so you, you don't like black people? Is that what you're trying the to say? Way he, <laughs> the way he ever said it was not disparaging or in a way that a racist right. would use the word. Right. He didn't use it to describe a person. He didn't use it. He didn't say it to a person. Right. But it's like he's repeating something. He's or repeating the word. something, or and, yeah. and and rather than dance around and say the code word for the word, he said the word. Sure. If people can't make that distinction, sure, and give the guy uh, 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 engage in good faith, that they have to own that. That they're 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 doing mental gymnastics to make a fight out of something. That well, isn't, I, well, but we all know that that goes further because they're trying to prove a point. Because the president of the United States right now has a speech that he gave in Congress when he was a senator Correct. where he said the N word three times. Correct. But they don't, but they're not, but they're not just jumping on Correct. his ass. To so the word now. itself is not toxic. It's just, unless you make it that way, of course, but I don't know, man, I think it's a, it's, it, they picked the fight with the right one. This, this cancel culture bullshit oh, yeah. is, has met its match. Because, oh, absolutely. Because of his followers yeah. and people who are critically thinking about it. And, and his followers are on all sides. It's not just, it's not just the gun, gun toting hunters in, you know, in Texas and shit like that. Did These you are, see the offer by rumble? Yeah. hundred million flat out. And it's awesome. So according to Lex Friedman, a guy that he has on the show regularly, yeah. Joe Rogan has had fuck you money for a long time now, even before Spotify. Absolutely. So I don't know if he makes the jump just for the money. Well, let's okay. So I'm going to back this up a little bit. Obviously, before I started this show, I did some research on the you know, most popular podcast well, in the world. Well, well monetization <laughs> and stuff like well, yeah. because look, I mean, before Joe Rogan, it was it was uh, the um, Adam Carolla. It was the yeah. man show, you know, girls on trampolines, stuff like that. Look, we know what fucking people like to listen to. Traditionally, women are not listening to podcasts. They're watching murder mystery fucking shows. Um, men over overwhelmingly are listening to podcasts. So they want to talk. They want to hear what fucking men want to talk about. Girls on trampolines. Uh, <laughs> in the background. Yeah. Celeste at the bar. So eyeballing. I, I, I'm sitting there watching all this and I'm seeing. Obviously, I look at what people are making, and let's just be very clear about this. You know, you take you take for example, just on YouTube alone, not not, not taking Joe Rogan's advertisement that when he was on, uh, you know, Google um, Google Podcast or Apple Podcast or any of this other stuff, just just from YouTube alone. Before he made the transition over to Spotify, his average show average show had something around six million viewers. Wow. Okay. I did the research that what you're looking at is when you have you have these shows where the average viewership is like a hundred or, or, or like five hundred thousand, you have people getting paid. They're literally getting paid twenty to forty thousand dollars when the average viewership of one show is between around half a million. He has six million, so he's putting out three to four shows a week. He was probably oh, six million a week or a month or what? No, that was per show. He was he was he, he had six million viewers of every show. Oh, there, I think his reach is, is well. It's beyond that now. Yeah, yeah. It's almost twelve million now per per show on on Spotify. It was when he went to Spotify. It was close to twelve uh, ten million. Whoa. Now it's almost twelve million right. per show on Spotify. But this is this was before he made the switch to Spotify. The average show on on YouTube was around six million. It's around eleven million now because they only put clips out. They don't put the entire show on YouTube anymore like they used to, because you can actually download Spotify and you can watch the entire show on Spotify for free. Can you get JRE like podcast like the whole thing from his site or, or no? You have to get it from Spotify only from Spotify. Uh, okay. So. So again, numbers, excluding numbers now, before he made the switch to Spotify, he right. was somewhere around 6 million views per show. And they're viewing it the whole way through. Right. They're viewing the whole goddamn show all the way through. So you checking him, make sure you're, you're okay. You're not in trouble. Oh, you got to let her know that you're, 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 you're running late. Let him know you're running late. Yeah. We're, 
Well, yeah, I get my children's. Yeah. No, well, no, no, we'll, no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up here in a minute. But no, I got so much more to ask. Okay, keep going. But so okay. anyway, so before he makes the switch to Spotify, he's got about six million views per show. Now he's doing three to four shows per week. The same exact pace that he's doing now on Spotify. It's three to four shows. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's four. So just average of three to four shows per week. He's making from YouTube. He's making somewhere in the neighborhood, somewhere in the neighborhood of anywhere between three and five million dollars a month Shit. on YouTube. That's just in YouTube advertisement. That's before he ever fucking went to Spotify. The only reason he went over to Spotify is because he didn't want to deal with the bullshit anymore. They paid him a hundred million dollars, paid him a hundred million dollars for five years, twenty million dollars, plus he gets sponsorship money. That's just the fucking money he was getting paid to be on the show. He's still getting sponsorship money. Right. He's getting that now. So, so that's that was the Rumble Wait, contract it was a hundred million for four years. But, but, but add to that. You know, look, when you go on somebody like Joe Rogan show and stuff like that, well, I'll, perfect example. It's a perfect example. Fred. Fred has an uncle who was a Green Beret, okay? Fred's uncle was one of the guys that went in during Black Hawk Down to save the, 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 the guys the, in down. Mogadishu. He was, one of those, he was one of those guys. He plays a prominent role. If, if I'm not mistaken, Eric Bana, the character of Eric Bana in the movie Black Hawk Down is supposed to represent Fred's uncle. Shit. Okay. Guy's a fucking badass. I've met him twice, I think, over the period of like 30 years. Well, he, he rescued the, the down shopper. Yes. Okay, yeah, he wasn't you. one of the guys right, that went right, down. Right. He came in afterwards and rescued them. Right. Um, but he's a fucking Green Beret, man. He's a, he's a fucking badass. Um, so anyway, he has started a whiskey and cigar company. Lives in Orlando. And like I had contacted, I, I said, hey, Fred. I said, hey, man. Dude, the next time your uncle comes down, would you call him and see if he's going to come on my show? Or would, would you call him to see if he would come on my show? And Fred, Fred, of course, Fred's like, yeah, let me text him. Let me, let me find out when he's going to come down. And he, he responds with, hey, what's your friend's, what's your friend's, the, what's the name of your friend's show? He says, I'm about to do uh, Joe Rogan. He was on it? He's, he's, coming, he's coming on Joe Rogan. They're paying him. Oh, wow. They're paying for his flight. They're paying for his hotel and everything. So, look, if you go on the Joe Rogan show... They pay for these people. Right. They're not going to pay you to be on the show. They're going to pay for your trip and your airfare sure. and all that stuff. Because if you go on the Joe Rogan show, 12 million people are going to hear your voice and they're going to buy your product. They're going to buy your cigars. I know and... someone who was on it. Really? Yeah. He, uh, well, I mean, know him loosely. Late Lane Norton was a, is a uh, uh, strength and conditioning guy. Um, I'm going to say he's in the fitness world. Yes. Yeah. And, and one thing he does, he'll promote someone who's like totally about the carnivore diet. Someone mm -hmm. who's totally in the ketogenic. But he gets everybody's yeah. thing. So, I mean, he, he does a good job of entertaining all the sides, I feel like. Well, just like, just like him having, you know, somebody like Dr. Peter McCullough on or, or uh, Robert Malone. With the COVID shit. Yeah. yeah. He, had, he, also had, he also had seven other doctors that, were, that, that came on that, didn't, that, that basically were touting the party line as far as this is what COVID is and this is what it does and this is on and on and on. Yeah, so he certainly gets all sides of sure. it. Sure. But anyway, back to, yeah. Joe Rogan has first off. I mean, he was on. He was on. You know, Fear Factor. He was on Hardball. He was on News Radio. Um, he's a stand-up comedian. Great comic. Yeah, he's a great comic. He's funny as fuck. And look, man, he gets paid like five between. I think it's something like five hundred thousand dollars to do UFC every time. Plus sponsorship. Plus salary. The guys. The guys. The guys just. He's winning. making a phenomenal amount of money. Good for him. But I, I just. It's the perfect person and the person perfect person's following. To pick a fight with, yeah. if you want to be petty and you want to uh, um, try the cancel culture stuff, because it's like, wait a minute. Well, Jordan this Peterson, is... Jordan, Jordan, Jordan B. Peterson. Did you hear it? Um, oh, I love that show. The, I, you, uh, it's a good one. Oh, yeah, I loved it. Loved it. So I watch about. He's like, a very emotional guy, which is great. You've seen him tear up, and yeah, not yeah. on that show particularly, but I've seen just him, in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, but but Nuggets, man. I mean, uh, I'm sure there's smart people who think, ah, Jordan Peterson. But a, a half hour of listening to their conversation is like gives me like hours of content no, to talk about with friends. I flat out told Fred, I said, you know what? I said, I got to stop fucking hanging out with you. I said, I got to get smarter friends. Yeah. I said, yeah, after yeah. listening to Jordan Peterson, that r makes me realize I need some fucking more intelligent fucking friends. <laughs> yeah. I said, I got to do away with you. I'm trading your ass in. But there is something to be said about who you surround yourself with. I mean, this is not revolutionary stuff. Everyone knows who, who you hang out with is, who, is the medium of, but like my barber is a go-getter like that. Miguel yeah. Jose is very much like that. Miguel. He's going to be on. 
Miguel is going to be a good he's, guest. Uh, yeah, he's going to be on. I talked to him about it, of course. Of course, I'm going to have to be a little more gentle with him than I am with a lot of other people. No, no, Miguel, no, dude, no, Miguel the, can give it as good as he can take. No, no, that's just the agreement with him. Obviously, I mean, look, people like him live a different life. You know, it's, they're, they're, they're in a different world. It's not like you and me that we can have this conversation. And, and you know, look, I mean, if, if it gets out there on the podcast and he says something crazy, it could affect his, his job and his business. Oh, uh, maybe, that. yeah. So, but, but, but as far as like... Um, Man, Miguel's just always been winning, dude. I mean, we, he's even, a great guy. He's so cool. I, I made fast friends, obviously, with you. There's certain people at these invitationals or national meets you'd pair up with your your peers. And but I always find those guys from the Northwest, and it was always yeah. like we never missed a beat. But Miguel would have a different girlfriend every nationals, you know, like. <laughs> and then and and he's uh, a good looking guy, man. He's a play. I mean, he's a family got a, a beautiful family sure. now. But but, uh, but even like, uh, you're familiar with like Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah, I've actually never read it, but I know exactly what you're but talking about. But he was up on that shit way before. Yeah. And yeah. and has kind of manifested his life now. The guy is a winner, man. But I, my, I, to land my plane, Miguel, my barber, there's guys like this, right? And yeah. when, I'm a, when I'm around him, I remember I'm, I, it's inspiring. And you think, man, I kind of want my own shit. I kind of want to be. And then you get around your bummy friends again. You're like, yeah, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm back to being a loser. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take my paycheck, miss you know. Anyway, but, but Miguel's one of those guys. God, I'm the king of my own fucking domain right now. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the best in the group, man. I can't keep up with like what he does, but like if there's like a presidential club. He's part of it. And yeah. Dude, I mean, he, he's, oh, yeah. he's a success, but he's a success at whatever he puts his mind to. But, but it's like with Fred, I mean, look, I, I tease him a lot. I tease him all the fucking time because I, I think he's honestly growing up around him. Like, like we talked about, we just, I just, for some reason I thought he was mentally handicapped <laughs> because he could just turn his fucking brain off. He's talking about something you're like, you're normal. Yeah. I was like, what you actually, you can speak. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know yeah. how to use your hands and everything. Like, look, but, but I tell him all the time, but well, I, he grew into himself a little bit. Because, to be fair, I love fourth. I'm not, yeah. I love fourth. Fourth as a boy. He was awkward. Was awkward. Well, and, and I tell him all the time, I mean, but that's why I tease him is because like if somebody will say something about him like, hey, take it easy. He was homeschooled. He doesn't fucking know the difference. Which only which kind of shows itself in those kind of formative years. But then, yeah, but, but this is why. Thank God that he got into a sport where he was able to travel and be around other people and stuff. Granted, that's largely why he was homeschooled. But this is why 10 year reunions, high school reunions, 20 year re reunions are so cool because when you let's say we're that age and I'm into this and you're into that and we're just in different lanes. But at some point life kicks everyone in the nuts and we all come together and we're like, Oh, you, you like beer and girls too. You yeah. know, like, like, you, know, like oh, yeah. you like titties. <laughs> you're right. 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 <laughs> so like everyone, everyone eventually finds themselves. But, but I remember having the kind of the same revelation of where, of where I was always friendly with fourth, but then the same kind of thing. We're like, Oh, fourth's one of us. He's a, he knows what's up. He's cool. Oh, yeah. He dude. He's man. It's like, I, I have such good, fun conversations with him because, I mean, you've got young kids. So have you seen the movie in, um, Inside Out? Yes. I love okay. Inside Out. So, so Fred is the fucking fire character. All like core memories are with, are with uh, yeah. Fred. Yes. But, he's, but he's, he's the one that just like, if you, you can get him fired up on something and then the flames start fucking shooting out <laughs> and everything. And, and that's Harry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Oh, yeah. The moment I could fire off something about, I could fire off something about Chad or Harry or something like that. And he just goes off. Like the other night, it was freezing outside. So we sat up in the game room and we were smoking a hookah in the game room, just blowing it out the window. Was hookah what you guys call it in Texas? Kind of, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, we're a couple of degenerates. We, you know, it's so fucking cold outside. But like we're smoking it inside. Right. Um, but like, like I, I started asking him about something and he got fired off and he just fucking, he went off for like 20 minutes. And then you and press like the record button. Like, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, I got my phone sitting right here. Here, Fred. Speak a little bit louder. But, but anyway, man, look, Hey, I know you got to go, man. I do have to go. Hey, I was going to talk about Chad real fast. You said, um, we were talking about Chad earlier yeah. in different capacities because, because you know him personally off the track Yeah, and he, we do have a relationship with him off, the, but just as a skater, objectively, just if you only knew him as a skater, what a treat to be able to watch him skate. I, I, I don't think, but when I say that, I mean, like, how, how did you, how were you able to get that sentence out with his balls in your mouth? <laughs> that was, that was uh, <laughs> in, in contrast, you're a kid, uh, you're, look, you're, 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 you're a freshman boy today. Skating. I say this, I say this all the time because it's like, it's, it's for some reason, some reason, nobody has a fucking memory of speed skating past Joey Mantia, right? Joey Mantia is a great athlete. Obviously he's at the Olympics right now. There's sure. nothing to take away from Joey Mantia, Fantastic athlete. but you cannot touch Chad Hedrick. It was an amazing time in our sport to be able to watch an athlete To like be able that. to see that. But so, like I said, like you get a freshman boy or, or, or girl, whoever, you get a young person in the sport now. Yeah. They just don't understand the, 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 um, uh, 
aura of, of being at a meet that he was at. Yeah. And you were going to get to see it. And yeah. you were going to get to watch the warm up, And you were going to get to watch the race. And, and what he was able to do... Um, there's a vi video. It's got like M and M's till I collapse or whatever. The best part of the video, there's like a Chad section where he's indoors weaving in and out, and it's just it's phenomenal. There's nothing like it. It was it. There's to, nothing else like to, it. To, to explain like it. to explain what it was like. I mean, and granted, I was I was I was very fortunate. I got to skate with him every single day. That's my point. You so it's like granted that it's it, it's like it's yeah. like it's like it's like you're like you're around your children all the time. Right. So you may not notice these huge leaps. You don't see the magic. <laughs> when but when your when your parents get around them, all of a sudden they're like, oh my god, man, look, look they fucking grew big. Right, right. They got damn big. Being around Chad, you just you you kind of came numb to a lot of this stuff. You just it just is what the fuck what it was. Um, and it's hard for you, probably you to separate the athlete from the person. It just becomes one thing. It's you Chad. know, it, it, well, I mean, granted, when we were younger, it was very difficult because, I mean, look, we were all very competitive. Look, Chad was a dickhead. I was a dickhead. You're nice. not going to be good. Nice. <laughs> I mean, that's just reality. <laughs> Chad was a fucking asshole. He yeah. treated all of us horribly. He acknowledges that to this day. He treated us all very badly because, I mean, God— and you can't really blame the guy. He was, it was, it was literally like Michael Jordan playing against, um, I don't know, man, compare, compare somebody who would play in the, in, uh, first off, I care less if the NBA goes away, but take somebody like Michael Jordan and put him, put him, I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. You just, somebody that's not at that caliber. Chad would be Michael Jordan and we would be everybody else. I don't blame him one for one second having that attitude, for, for, for having that mentality, for thinking about the sport the way he did, for getting the most he got out of the sport. I don't blame him one bit for it. Um, but the fact is he treated us like shit. Um, but by far, hands down, without a question, just the weirdest the anomaly you've ever experienced. Because if you look at the guy, he doesn't look like a fucking athlete. Not for one second does he look like an athlete, there's some, but he's a phenomenal fucking athlete. There's something about that dude's engine that no one else had. Well, I tell this all the time. I mean, he, you know, he, he liked hockey. And to, to, to add to Chad having a bad fucking attitude and, and, and just being like everybody else, he went and played hockey. He used to play hockey and was a phenomenal hockey player. Right. We went out there and smarted off to somebody who was a lot bigger than them, and they fucking smacked him with the butt of their stick, hmm. and they broke his jaw. Nice. And he had to get his jaw wired shut. Well, to tell you how great of an athlete he is, he comes to fucking practice with four other members of the fucking team on, on the world team, me, Cheryl, Ashley, Fred, plus all the other phenomenal skaters that we had on the team, all these really, really fast guys like Billy Rainey and Car uh, uh, Colby Anderson and Gerald Kendall. Chad still comes to practice and fucking whoops our ass. With a, with a wired shut jaw. With his mouth wired shut, drooling out the goddamn side. Like, and the only thing he can eat is goddamn applesauce and pour water down on his face. And he literally, Dude, you know. How about the stories of him winning races without a wheel? Yeah. Like a wheel falling off and sparking. You know, you know how good I don't, he is? I don't know many of those because. There's I'm, one I'm, or two. But there's, I'm not sure if those are legend or real. But I do some know, are real. I do know of a story of, of, of fourth, for example. Um, Getting the better of him? No, no, nothing like that. Um, but I know of a story of like, like, like Jordan Nelson, um, actually took off, like was fucking with Fred on a race. No, it wasn't it wasn't Jordan Nelson? It was somebody else. Um, they 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 actually loosened up uh, Fred's wheel. Oh, that's you got to fight. Yeah, he ended up losing. Like uh, he he ended up losing the front wheel of a fucking marathon. That's not cool at all. No, not at all. But you fuck with somebody's equipment. There's certain things that keep that in check. You have to you have to you have to stand up yourself off the track. But, you know, the, 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 to show how good he was, you take, like, the Keith Turners, the, the Chad Birdzalaskis, you know, in my rank. You were measured by capitalizing on opportunities against Chad, maybe yeah. win it, stealing a race here and there. But in the grand scheme of things, man, I mean, the dominance that that guy had, I'm fucking yeah. nuts, dude. Fucking yeah. Nuts. No, it was. I mean, granted, granted, I got to skate against him all the time when we were at practice. And Have so, you ever met Joey? Joey. Mentia? Uh, when he was a kid. He was very young. But you met him, but even when you were still in the sport, you uh, met absolutely. him? Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. When he was very, very young. But, but promising. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, the kid the kid looked like he was a fucking bodybuilder at like eight years old. Yeah, yeah. Um, him and Brittany were... Uh, you know, that's, I remember when, that's a big question. I remember when me. they went from like... Um, <laughs> no, I remember when they went from promising, like these, pro these fast promising kids from Ocala to like, yeah. oh, they're here. They're, you know, I, they're so I've, I've actually had some conversation with Renee... And um, I, I would love to have. I'm gonna at some point. Renee, Renee's gonna come on. She's agreed to come on the nice, show and everything. Nice, yeah. And and 
to me, to me, like, like having the discussion of how she managed to take three kids from like central Florida that really no one fucking lives there. It's not like a huge population center. And she just molded these three amazing talents from, from early on. uh, She might've even discovered Brittany. I mean, I think she found her at like a birthday beginning. Yeah, man. You know, I skated for Renee. Yeah. Um, and, and so like after you left Stardust. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's no, no, but you know, the, um, your name and Billy Rainey and all these other guys, there was a cast of, of characters behind Joey and Brittany. Like, like Renee formed a lot of people, man. I mean, she, she got so many people good. Um, but yeah, those are the main players. I mean, of course, Joey and Joey and Brittany are her babies. And, um, I mean, it's a weird. It's a very weird thing that when when certain people make a transition from inline to ice. But I mean, look, we can obviously name them off. You can name off Apollo, Chad, Joey Cheeks. Uh, I mean, Derek Para, Jennifer Derek, Rodriguez. Derek, well, the, the pioneers of it were Derek Para, Casey Booty. Casey, you know, it's kind of funny. Casey's going, the best going, to never do it. Yeah, <laughs> look, <laughs> the hey, best to never do. Like Casey actually had a reminder. I need to talk to Casey today. He'd um, be a good guest. He's he's gonna come on. He's agreed to come on. He was on vacation last week. Uh, he he is fucking hilarious. Uh, just in general, I, I have a story. I have a story that I'll talk to him about. About I mean, I remember when we were tra- when we were in, I was in Canada. He was still skating and he was dealing with like long track and everything. And just what he talked about, what he did, because um, he was dating Jen Rodriguez at the time. Married and yeah, but it was just it was just no, they were just dating at the time oh, when, this, oh, oh. when this took place. Right, and. Um, the story he gave and the way he fucking animated everything. And like he's, he's, he's got her under him and he's doing this and all this other nonsense. He's, he's just, easily he's fucking hilarious. Robbed Campbell. Yeah. And Casey, what are like the funniest people? Yeah. The funniest people. But Casey, um, I mean, he did, he's the pioneer. He made the jump and he's fucking good. He's really good. Yeah. Um, you know, it's actually really funny. It's kind of, I, I just kind of funny is Jordan, um, or not Jordan, sorry, Jonathan Garcia, so he's making a transition now. He's no longer actually skating. He is an athlete representative to the uh, board, to the, um, the the board of U.S. Speed Skating, an athlete representative. So he's one of four athlete representatives, but he's finishing up his term. But what he's been concentrating on the past couple of years is actually coaching hockey. He's a power coach. And um, ironically, the guy that he's, like, like they, they formed a business together they partnered with. Right. Jonathan's actually moving to Wisconsin. This guy got hired on as the director of, 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 of hockey at a huge like hockey academy in Wisconsin. And uh, Jonathan got hired as the power coach. And so they're going out there together. Well, what's funny is this guy, when he started out playing hockey, he's play, he played in hockey for like, he played in the league for like 14 years. I don't know how old he is now, but when he first started playing hockey, he played for the uh, Blackhawks. Dan Jansen storied speed skater was the power coach for the Chicago Blackhawks. Really? Yeah. After so his career, he became a, became a coach, became wow. a hockey coach. So it was ironic. It was like full circle. The guy, the guy that became a 14 year veteran sure. in the hockey league learned how to skate from a, from a speed skater. And now Jonathan's in that role. Yeah. And now Jonathan's a partner with the guy and Jonathan's going to be a coach. There's a story you're familiar with Eric Hyden and Beth, Beth Hyden. Um, I think he only did one Olympics. So he, he got five gold medals. He just came in, whooped everyone's ass, and got out, and yeah. became the doctor, of course. Yeah. So the story is he had won. Th- by the way, this will never happen again because of a uh, race specialist. You're not gonna if you're not a dedicated sprinter. The chances of a, a guy who can win the other four races winning the sprint. Yeah, I can care less to do anything longer than than 500 meters. Yeah. yeah so so, so these all round guys, this doesn't exist anymore. But he won five gold medals. But at the time, if I'm not mistaken, the story goes he had only won four. And he was going to do a cover shoot for Sports Illustrated where they wanted him to uh, wear the five medals. And he's like, I haven't won the, my races tomorrow. I can't do the photo shoot with five medals if I only won four of them. Right. And he was live with the Miracle on Ice, the hockey game. And, of course, it's, I mean, it's like the most historic game. He's so fired up and inspired by this whole thing. He's like, fuck it, I'll do the – and he did it. He took that photo shoot with five gold medals. He hadn't won that fifth race yet. Yeah, so really. I mean, the guy was an animal. He was an amazing uh, uh, athlete. But I don't know how we got off on that, but, but, but it's interesting that, like, it's never the career guys. Like, buy your time. Buy your third Olympics. It'll all come together. These people don't wait for the – baton to be passed that you rip it out of your hands and, and eric hyden just came out of nowhere won five races and well, got out dude I, i'll be honest man that was a huge part of i mean i said fuck it that's i i wanted i wasn't going to wait around for another olympics 
It's like now got, or never. Yeah, this like, is it. like I got pushed. I got pushed to the side in 2002 Salt Lake Olympics. I had and I was okay with that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home and start a fucking family. I'm not putting in another four years for this. <laughs> it's shit. over. I'm done. What are these guys going to do now, man? I mean, I just saw. So Joey just got sixth in the 1500, which he was favored to be medal if not win. Yeah. Brittany got was it eighth or tenth. So I mean, they could turn this thing around. That's not usually how it works. I you don't usually make adaptations that quickly. I mean, I'm yeah. hoping so. He has a lot of opportunity. The mass start, the team pursuit, and there's another distance. I think. I mean, the, the guy could still get on the podium and, and make something happen. He's, but I mean, fuck, man, what an incredible athlete. I just hope it comes together for these people now. Like, this is it. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, look, you talk I, about going to another Olympics. What do you do? I'll be honest. I mean, what this is? What this is? Britney's third Olympics. This is Joey's second Olympics. Joey, this I think is, this is, is Joey's this, third Olympics. This might be Britney's. This is Britney's third. third. Or fourth, this is it? Britney's third. This is Aaron's second. Um, look, uh, look, I, I think, I think at the end of the day, I think, uh, someone, someone, someone in Britney's category, someone in Aaron's category, um, I think they're going to, they're going to make a bunch of money from some other things. Uh, they've probably made a bunch of money already. Good for them. Sure. Uh, I think Joey has a, what he has a coffee shop or something like that, or did have a coffee he shop. He did. It's a pet project. But he also, but he also comes from a good family. He's also very marketable. Absolutely. Absolutely. These guys, this is my opinion. I, I, this is based on fucking nothing. If they do their part, yeah, the highlight reel's ready to be. They're getting ready to press play. Yeah, there's this built-in story. The guy's got legs that nobody there has. Yeah, I mean, by, but visually, don't the guy talk like that. This that's bullshit. Don't talk like that. That's no, the guy, the guy's incredible. I mean, you incredible. know what? You know what? If I was five foot four, I would look the fucking. <laughs> <guy. Okay. laughs> no, but the guy. No, he's he a great looking guy. You know, he's, he's charismatic. He's, I mean, he's, yeah, he's, so he, he he's speaks the, well. He can act. He's well. not going to get the McDonald's bag and the and, and, and the Dancing with the Stars like, but but he has that. Yeah. But it's all the all these guys and Brittany is an. I mean, the flag bearer. She's an incredible human being. Yeah. All they need to do is put it together, and the rest will take care of itself. But I think I think uh, if, if, look, and this is nothing. This is no dig on on Brittany, but I but I'll be honest. I think Brittany probably has the the longest runway of 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 them all because of her LGBT, uh, you know, her story, her story. Sure. I think people are going to attach to her sure. in, in a much, in a much better way, in a much longer way that, that, that resonates with people. If that's the case, they couldn't ask for a better advocate or, I mean, even in, in terms of like the flag bearer or, yeah. or, or someone to represent the Olympic spirit. I mean, she is it, dude. Oh, and, yeah. that, and, and by the way, there's people like us who, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, look, look, I'm always my own publicist. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, 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 I'll be myself, but I'll also be whoever you want me to be. You know. What I mean? <laughs> Whereas, but, but, but to, to that point, and not to you know be her uh, uh, white knight, but she doesn't need one. She she is as advertised. She yeah, is. Yeah, she, she, so doesn't, she doesn't want a white knight. She wants a white queen. Yeah, you don't talk but like she's, that. But 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 she's an incredible human being. Like like all, she deserves the good things that come her way. She just has to to uh, uh, hopefully. Make it happen this Olympics, man. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I, you know, I'll be honest, man. I'm not going to watch the Olympics. I'm not going to watch it at all. Ah. I, I only I only watched the opening ceremonies under protest because Samantha had it on and Fred and I were sitting there talking and um, they use my MB, they they use they use my cable access. Were you blown away by? Did you see it? Yeah, not I, blown away, but were you like fuck man, technology? They, they, I mean, what what city in America could put that on in Beijing? The way they did it, I'm saying like, they don't deserve to have the fucking Olympics. Agreed. IOC should. I mean, it's an. They should have pulled it. No, no, no. I mean, look, Bob Costas and uh, Al an Michaels it's, talk about that. It's a, it's a snub. I mean, in so many ways, it's an embarrassment that they have it. One hundred percent. But but then as you're watching it, you're thinking, who? What American city could host this right now? Yeah, but it's it's it, the, having the Olympics in in China right now would be the same thing of trying to have it in Cambodia back in the '70s when they're trying to kill off half the all, fucking population. Yeah, man, like they got, let's let's kill off all the indigenous people, but let's also pretend it didn't happen and put it on fucking TV. Here's a great exit. Here's a great exit. <laughs> China standing arm in arm with Russia. Yeah, I don't even know what that means for us, but it doesn't sound good, dude. Yeah, that it could not. Like, yeah, okay. I can't speak intelligently about that hey, subject. I'm just saying, like, exactly. What the fuck? Peace out. Yeah, we're done. We're done with this shit. Yeah. yeah, team America, you motherfuckers are coming home. We'll pay you all for your goddamn gold medals. We'll give you your ten thousand dollars, your thirty thousand dollars, whatever. Well, they the fuck did a diplomatic did. boycott. They didn't do yeah. an athlete. I mean, but yeah, it's hard to, to pull athletes. Yeah, but, but yeah, you can't. You don't want to punish the athletes because of these 
these people acting like a bunch of fucking assholes. Right. But how do you do that? You have what, what's his name, uh, Xi Jinping and and Vladimir Putin coming out in arm in arm. You might as well have been jerking each other off on fucking worldwide television. Which is in regards to what the Ukraine thing. Absolutely, they're in solidarity because they're both red. And they're gonna steamroll Ukraine. Fuck yeah, they're already man. Come on. And you got a hundred thousand troops over there, and you got you got you got fucking Sleepy Joe over there talking about eighty five hundred sending a fucking UN force of eighty five hundred. Suck my dick, Joe Biden. That's not nearly fucking. <laughs> you hear that, Joe? Suck my cock, Joe Biden. Hey, I want to thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> and I want to thank, I want to thank, I want to thank you, you, and you. All three of all you. All three watched. of you for sticking it out, man. Yeah, I had man. really nothing to offer. I, I'm sorry I wasn't such a. Uh, the whole time, man. It was great. I have nothing to add. It was dude. great, dude. You were great the whole fucking time. Anytime you need me to sit here while you go on your fucking, <laughs> when I tell Joe Biden your to sex, suck my uh, dick on your sex capades, I'm here to listen. You, wanna, you know what? I can't remember Celeste's last name of my fucking life. That's but you the know, best. Maybe, maybe maybe go out tonight and find another Celeste. You know, I gotta get up early though. Write morning. your hate mail to Tombball, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> this misogynistic dude. Oh God, no. You know what? Hey, I I tell you what. For the it was the man. It, it was like a fucking movie. If I sat down and wrote the whole thing out, if I went down the whole fucking list of everything that happened, if I could remember every part of the conversation that we had, it was like a fucking movie. I'm glad you had a good time here on uh, on our account. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Florida. Is it beer 30? You, you, guys, you guys are fucking degenerates down here. I think she was from Florida. I don't think she was from fucking wherever the fucking podunk. She's Wisconsin. working. She's Oh, she's at the bar reading a book okay, right now you, with her glasses know, hey, on. Hey, I was half tempted just because I wasn't doing a whole lot today. I was so fucking half tempted just to like, I mean, this has been kind of creepy. This actually would have been your move. Back let's, in the hear, day. let's hear it. Let's you hear it. Let's hear Do you remember the story, Joseph Warren, Joseph Colazzo, <laughs> where I went in when I was in a room? I forgot which girl I was in the fucking room with. Oh, you said this before. I don't recall it. Oh, I yeah. In. No, you were you were already in there. You were already in the goddamn room. You were like hiding behind the fucking curtains, and all of a sudden, I'm on top of this chick, and I look over, and your fucking head's poking around the goddamn curtain like this. You don't have to tell. You don't have to tell the. (laughs) You don't have to tell the b word to find the honey. You know what Uh, I mean? It was. I was like, what the fuck. Uh, All right, don't say anything. Just, just put your get your head back. And the whole time, I'm like, let me finish before you fucking walk out. Some of those times, there's more than I remember, actually. But there's some of those times are so funny, man. And, and what's so bizarre is, like, I never paid it forward. Like, when you were 25, 26, did you – I didn't pal around with 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds. No. I didn't buy them beer. I mean, I like – Fuck no. But there was no shortage of older guys and older women. Yeah. Playing a role time. in our life. Yeah. I mean – very unique circumstance. It was bizarre. I never, I, I, when I was of a certain age, I had no interest in people below my social circle. Yeah. Whereas, man, there was like 28 year olds getting me beer. I was I'm grateful for it. I think, I, again, yeah. I think it kind of goes back to uh, it, it, even if, even if you didn't necessarily reach the heights of, say, Chad Hedrick, I think that there was just an era of skaters that were recognized, that were out there, that people wanted to, like, the, the, they wanted to, be in our in, in our solar system or they were part of the solar system what ends up happening this is a good point is you start making friends off of ability versus uh age appropriate so it'd be almost oh, yeah. like to, well to have a senior in high school hang out with a sophomore or freshman is bizarre yeah let's say this the sophomore is a standout on the track team and so is the senior yeah they have a rapport they have sure. something in common and and so their relationship is is not organic but yeah. It, or, or maybe it is organic, but under those circumstances. So skating allowed for like, yeah, there was. But it made there, sense. There it was the win, there was the people in the winter circle and the people who weren't. And if you were part of that club or you were friends with that club, you made friends with the, the Chad Hedricks. You yeah, know, well, it was totally justified for you to hang out with Jason Bach and you know have or you know have Sarah Dole around and stuff like that. These older people, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, it was yeah. totally justified. Yeah, it, it was, it's a weird thing, but I, I don't know. There's it, a lot of sports that are like that. No, but I but I but I I think it has. Well, I don't know, man. That's who you have to have on here. You gotta have fucking Jason Bach on here, dude. Oh my god, he's man. A, he can't he, live far from here. No, he's he he, he lives right at the road, but he's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's a, a fucking of, lunatic. of the best. He's great. He's yeah. Of not the a best kind. So this guy has found redemption. He's a. Uh, uh, I mean, I can't he does like that. motivational speaking type shit, like where he writes shit on the board all the time. I get I get messages from. He's a holy roller now. He he found yeah. uh, he found uh, Jesus. Al Kaiser, same way. 
Yeah. And I, so I had a, a, I mean, Al was a good friend to me, my upbringing. Absolutely. And, you, yeah, you and, used to, you used to get all the skates. And he, and he still is. Uh, but, but, um, Al found sobriety through, uh, uh finding God and, uh, and Jason has turned a leaf on and God. And he, so everyone has their own path. I can't have somebody on the show that's going to fucking try to convert me though. No, dude. You know what it is? It, 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 with, with both people, but especially Jason, right? Like a, a couple questions in, and he's fucking back, dude. He's like, he's like, I. He'll he'll start glitching. Yeah. The Matrix kicks in for a second. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Jason's yeah. the best. You, but but what a character, man. There's you nobody. Know, somebody I want to have on um, is is Kurt Lebeda. Wow, man. I'd love to have on Kurt. Lebeda. Were you friendly with him? Were you close to him? No, I mean, because he wasn't really heavily involved in the sport back. My in that relationship time. with Kurt. Kurt's the younger brother. Yeah. Okay. Kurt was. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've never seen, I was a young guy. As a fact, my first club I ever went into, uh, I got into because he was kind of at the door, like uh, these seven are with me and I was kind of part of that. And it was like Scott Hyatt, uh, uh, Chad, Keith. You yeah. know. So it's, it's Colorado Springs. He gets us in and there's some guy stretching. He looks like the ultimate warrior and he's stretching in the corner. This is the first, my first club experience, right? I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm just, you know, part of it. And a couple of wild things happened. And, uh, one was like, I don't think, I mean, so many years have passed. I don't know how, but he's ready to rock. Kurt was a madman, dude. Like, yeah. or was it, I don't know, is it Scott Levada? Maybe Scott the Well, yeah, there's Kurt and Scott. I don't know which one's younger, but I, I, I would like to have Kurt on. Oh, I'm fucking up. I'm speaking out of turn. I don't know who I'm talking about. Scott Levada, Kurt Levada, Scott Levada. There's a wild one, man. He was well, a hockey guy. Yeah, he's the younger brother. Okay. One of them. One of them. One of, now the old. My brothers uh, know the older one. I think it's Kurt Levada. Scott Levada is who I'm thinking. Anyway, this guy was a player, dude. A wild man. I mean, like you're walking into the club. With, you're walking into your, the club with your girl holding hands, and he's grabbing her other hand, trying to take her out. Of the club <laughs> like an animal. Anyway, anyway, the Ultimate Warrior is getting a fucking. You really loosen up his hips and his knees. It's male review night. And about oh uh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> they stop the music, and about six Ultimate Warriors jump up, and I'm like, is this what clubbing is? If all the guys all oiled up, and I'm like, this is the weirdest thing. What, and what's a male review? You know, this is the most bizarre thing. I end up driving uh, home, driving like Derek Downing. You know, these guys are my heroes at the time, and I'm like driving them home because I'm the sober of the bunch, and it's like they're playing uh, Marcy's Playground. I mean, oh my love. God! So wait, they took you? They they took you to a gay club? It wasn't a gay club, but I think it turned into a. It could have been if you wanted. That's how the route you wanted to go. You know, <laughs> is that surprising that Chad took you, Joey Colazzo, to a club or to a gay club? Cute, no, soft little boy. Dude, they didn't want us hanging around. They definitely didn't want me. <laughs> like I had no business. So I'm idolizing these guys. I'm like, I want to, I want to catch a buzz with you guys. I'm following you guys. I'm like, you get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was weird. But that was a, biz a bizarre line to dance where you, you guys are my. My, I'm a fan. Yeah. You're my mentors, but you're you know, also look, my friends. Again, but you're also my. The, 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 the dynamic between Chad and I was weird. And again, I, I say this today. Chad and I do. We, we, we did not get along when we skated. You know, we treated each other like shit. I'm very proud of the person Chad has become today. Regardless of how he got there, like, I think it's fantastic. I think Chad's a, a phenomenal father. I think he's a great husband. He's a great business person. I think he's, I think he's turned into a really phenomenal person. And but a really my, phenomenal real estate agent. Yeah. <laughs> gold to From sold. gold to sold. Everything I touch turns to <laughs> sold. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him. I, I think, I mean, just, just as a human being, I think, I'm proud of him as a human being. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. my, 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 my support to him could actually mean absolutely fucking nothing, but whatever. Um, but the dynamic with Chad was different between us because our families were close. Chad dated my sister. Um, and so even like, like, like the story you just told, like kind of like just, Oh, I'm just kind of, and I'm just happy to be here. I want to kind of like hop along with everybody. I ended up having that, by default it was like just natural it was just there because you know he was dating my fucking sister right so like we were just hanging out we were just constantly around each other on personal levels like he would come pick me up in the middle of the day and like we'd go have lunch or like we would got we got together and we were making fucking stereo box like speaker boxes for our vehicles that, like that breaks the uh uh mentor protege relationship yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it was weird is like we we fucking treated each other like shit on the track right competed very heavily but at the same time it was just like in a personal setting oh it was just like oh it was just i mean granted I'm, he's four years older than me it would, but i was just like i was just the friend you know it was like okay oh, hey, we're gonna go off and have lunch whatever today so it was it was different um well we're friends I, with him but we want to be him 
<laughs> so no. it's hard to that's, no no, no. Know, the, the the success at least I mean he was uh, the, to be that dominant he was the epitome of what we wanted to be you know? oh yeah yeah of course you just, everyone hoped that they were the next Chad Hedrick you know you're hoping like nah, you know what I'll be honest man I wanted to be Keith Turner Keith is a bad motherfucker I dude. want to be Keith. Keith because because it didn't matter how good Chad was Chad wasn't beating Keith in that sprint okay but, uh, true. Keith Keith is a, is an exceptional and Keith uh, and Keith skater. made it very clear he I mean he if he Keith wanted to he could skate those twenty k's was he gonna win them he has before sure okay but, but that was his goal he, equally equally I'd say the same amount Chad has shown I can sprint with sure, you sure he can sprint but but on but on Chad's best day again it's back and forth on on Keith's best day on a long race he's not beating Chad like he could. There's a possibility for it, but Chad nine times out of ten is going to win that fucking race. This, and he did nine times but, out of ten. This is the this is what I was saying earlier about measuring the Dane Lewis's, Keith Turner's, Derek Downing's, uh, uh, people who weren't his teammate, especially Chad Bird. Are me- it shows how good Chad was that you're measuring your success by your opportunistic wins against the, the guy who can't be beaten. Like this was commonplace with Chad. Uh, Chad Hedrick and Chad Bird went out on a breakaway, and and on the breakaway. Chad said to the other Chad, I'll be the workhorse, but when it's about a 200 meters, 100 meters out, we're going to drag race for it. That's the agreement. Sure. Bird said, okay. And, he, and Chad was the workhorse, and he just rode his coattails way away from the pack. And I don't know that Chad Bird didn't honor the agreement, but he jumped them. It wasn't a drag race. He came out from the draft and hammered, and he got the win, right? And that was the status that Chad was at at the time. He could, on his best day, beat Chad Hedrick in that circumstance, the perfect circumstance. Sure. That's, but anyway, that just shows how dominant. And, and by the way, Keith has those stories too. Chad Hedrick will tell you he slipped on a pebble and Keith ended up getting the win. But you're talking about like one race. Yeah. You're about like two races. The guy's yeah. been skating for 20 fucking years. But see, I had this, I had this, <laughs> you know I mean? I had this conversation the other night with somebody because you were more of a sprinter, um, like myself. Exclusive. But, but here's the difference. You know, when you do a 20 kilometer race, there's a lot of fucking, you've got a lot of time to make, to make errors and correct them. Right. You have zero time to make an error in a 300 meter and, and if, cause it's, it's that and yep. the race is done. Yep. I, meant, I, w- I would argue more so now the sport is so yeah. fast yeah. that you can't make a, a, a high percentage pass. Um, you know, like let's say, let's say you got off the line third yeah. and it's a 500 meter race to get to the front. Against people who are of relative skill and speed or whatever, man, you have your work cut out for you. If you if you think you're gonna stick a pass, let alone two of them, to get to the win, yeah, you got a lot of work cut That's out for you. That's why I should come back. Look, I got that fucking start. I'm just gonna get to the front and and, and jam the corner. That's right. No one's gonna pass me. Fuck, I'm just gonna fucking throw an arm out there. You see these tattoos? You backhand your ass. I'll fucking smack the shit out of you. Yeah, not that, yeah. To a crowd of four. You have more people watching right now. Right. Nobody's, watch, nobody's watching this. Let's, <laughs> let's end this thing. End this thing. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Man, Joey, I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on, man. My pleasure. So much. It was so much fun, man. My pleasure. Good I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we're gonna go do. Part two. Get me back on here. We'll, we'll have more to discuss. All right, man. All right, man. <laughs>